Hey everyone, Dave here, live from the shed. Uh, tonight's guest is Jim Kerr, better known as a Church of Bubbles. Um, yeah, really looking forward to chatting with him. The oops, got to turn that audio off. Um, the first time I came across the uh, Bubble Bus was my very first weekend in Ottawa. I um, I was just exploring the downtown and saw uh, the iconic bus in a parking lot. Uh, with with Church of Bubbles across it, and uh, right away I did a quick Google search. Said, "Well, that's interesting. I didn't know about that denomination." Um, so, and I came across Jim, and then got to meet him uh, later. And uh, we've gotten to connect at various events along the way. Just, um, yeah, really wonderful guy. So, if you guys know him at all, so full of energy and life. He just uh, he lights up every room that he's in. Uh, just just someone who uh, really brings a, a wonderful presence uh, to everywhere. Uh, he is, and we're going to get into talking a little bit about uh, the various ways he's been uh, continually harassed here by police. Some of you, if you watch the live streams in Rolling Thunder, uh, you would have seen how um, his <laughs> bus was surrounded by like a dozen or more cops and um, just dealing with a whole lot of um, drama there. And it's it's a very strange target to me because... Uh, Jim is uh, just such a wonderful uh, guy and um, uh, just all about bringing joy to people, blowing his bubbles and uh, giving hugs and smiling and uh, just uh, a really friendly uh, individual. And uh, clearly the um, <laughs> uh, police think differently, uh, such a waste of resources. And um, But we're going to hear a bit about that and the story of the bubble bus. I uh, just want to remind you guys again, this Saturday, if you're in Ontario, uh, the Worldwide Rally for Freedom is happening in uh, downtown Toronto, Queen's Park, uh, meeting up at noon. Uh, I'm told the north side of Queen's Park, uh, noon uh, at Queen's Park, and the march will begin around two o'clock. Uh, always a great event. Uh, hopefully the weather holds. We had some really nice weather here in uh, southern Ontario the last while, but it's gotten a bit rainy, but... Uh, hopefully it'll hold out for that event should be a good one uh, I'll be down there and I'll do a stream on Saturday to to cover the march there uh, for you guys and then again I keep repeating it I'll keep repeating it again mark your calendars for a tentative date of June 30th um, James Top is scheduled to arrive in Ottawa uh, he's a 28 year uh, member of the Canadian Armed Forces he's currently on leave for um, uh, refusing to take the mandatory injections. And um, he's been marching across Canada. He's currently in Northern Ontario. I believe he's doing a meet and greet soon in Thunder Bay. Uh, and he's planning to make it to Ottawa by June 30th. And uh, there's going to be some great stuff happening there over the Canada Day weekend. So I encourage you guys, uh, if you can make it to Ottawa for Canada Day weekend, um, the city of Ottawa has graciously uh, decided to move the Canada Day celebrations from Parliament Hill. So there'll be lots of room uh, for us <laughs> to wave our flags uh, and to take a stand for uh, freedom. Uh, not not surprising at all. We kind of expected it that they would end up moving Canada Day. Um, uh, quite silly in my opinion. But anyway, that's what they're doing. They're moving Canada Day. Uh, but Parliament Hill will be available and... Uh, no trucks allowed, but uh, we have a right to to protest as Canadians uh, and to take a stand um, for our country. And what better way to do that and stand for the country that we love than on Canada Day? So looking forward to that and uh, taking part in the welcoming of James Top by Veterans for Freedom. And I'll keep you guys posted on that. So um, let us... Oh, yeah. And if you missed the interview with um, Danny Bulford last night, Really great interview, ended up going for three and a half hours, um, but some amazing conversation, some great content there. He's such a gentleman and uh, a lot of good resources that he shared and just some great conversations um, from uh, an, an ex-RCMP officer and talking about that issue of um, when does an officer say enough is enough and when is it time to, to take a stand and had some really good chats with him. So I encourage you guys to take a look at that. Um, that was from last night with Danny Bulford. And then um, tomorrow I'm going to be interviewing uh, Kyle, who was the uh, young man who was beaten with the butt of a gun. Uh, many of you would have seen the video. 
uh, where he's pulled to the ground and repeatedly beaten with the butt of a gun. And we're going to hear his story uh, tomorrow. But let's go ahead and bring on Papa Bubbles himself, uh, Jim Kerr, live from the bubble bus. How you doing? <laughs> good, Dave. How you doing, buddy? Great. So good to see you, man. I, I don't know if you could hear me there before, but just telling people how uh, you always light up a room and I, I've always enjoyed uh, connecting with you because uh, you're just full of life. Life's a good thing, man. I appreciate it. I guess that's why they call the present the gift, huh? <laughs> exactly. Um, I wanted to start by just like, yeah, for people who don't know you, give us a little bit of an intro. Tell us about your family. Um, yeah, give us a little bio of yourself. Oh, well, uh, I'm a grandpapa. Yeah, I got a little nine-year-old grandbaby. got two kids, uh, and I've been married to my wife now for 28 years. I met her when we were 12, and uh, we just sold our home. We're moving on to bigger and better things, and life is beautiful, man. Awesome. And uh, tell us about, uh, you know, the bus. Obviously, it's become um, very connected to, to you as a person, and it's such an iconic uh, part of the the freedom movement. So tell us the story of the bus. How did you ever get this idea? Well, the bubble bus started off as a Burning Man art car. Um, I don't know if you know Burning Man, but it's a thing that happens in the desert. Uh, it's a city that's built out of nothing in the middle of nowhere. Uh, they burn it all down and then do it again every year. And uh, they have something called art cars where they drive these really cool, weird things around the desert. So uh, it started off as that. And then we got into a, a lot of more public service stuff, uh, you know, helping out homeless, distributing food, clothes. Uh, we show up at a various different events and just have the bus as a, a separate space that people could come in. Uh, they'd be separated from everything else around them, and we'd have some of the most unique conversations. And that's kind of how it started out. Yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, it was just a a fun way to uh, build community and start some conversations at, at these these events. Community outreach. Uh, well, that and I get free entrance everywhere. I mean, like, <laughs> pay for, you know, I, I, at one point I said, man, I got to get paid to party because I really like having fun, right? And sure enough, the bus turned into a thing. I mean, it doesn't pay us, but we don't have to pay. And that's kind of like getting paid. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's like a community center on wheels. And I remember that uh, from Ottawa, the, you know, the door is always open, always room for one more. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really wonderful uh, environment. And if, if you guys have never hopped in the bubble bus next time, uh, if you're in Ontario there and, uh, see the bubble bus then just knock on the door um unless you're the police the door might not open but other than that <laughs> other than that uh jim and his wife will uh, gladly open up the door and uh let you hop inside and hang out um and everyone's always welcome at the church of bubbles isn't that right yeah it's great i mean that's the church of bubbles whole philosophy is that we all live in our own beautiful bubble reality we don't got to be pricks and go popping other people's bubbles you know just join with the bubbles to lift you up higher make you feel more beautiful about yourself and that's it and it's the from from the the doctrine of the the Church of Bubbles. <laughs> um, do you have an official text or or not yet? An official text? What does that mean? Oh, I mean, have you created like a a, a, a document of uh, the the your Church of Bubbles philosophy that you just shared with us? You know, no, we haven't. We have some <laughs> principles. The very first one is, "Thou shall not spill thy bubble fluid." Uh, that shit's expensive, and it only comes out in summertime. Sorry about the language. <laughs> Um, so that also extends into life too, you know, uh, our life juice as it were is quite precious and we shouldn't just go spilling it for any reason. Uh, but when we do make it beautiful, you know, so we, we have some loose tenants, but basically it, it, uh, the church of bubbles came about as kind of the church that doesn't require any churches. Um, mm. you know, as opposed to following a, a central tenet of sorts, it just says, you know, you know, what's best for you. And. Uh, by giving first a little bit more than we take, we can we can solve all the world's problems. And uh, how did you come? How did you come up with the name then? And initially, whose idea was that? <laughs> well, I, you know, I can't take credit for a lot of this because it kind of just came through me. Originally, it was the Church of Base, uh, but the thing about Base is it's not accessible to grandmas and babies, so we turned it into the Church of Bubbles. And and the Church of Bubbles, it kind of came about because. We just started adding all these things to the bus, right? We put a smoke diffuser, so you put a smoke machine up top and it pours smoke all outside and lasers and lights and bubbles. But the bubbles, everybody, you, they, a certain thing happens when people see bubbles. They lose their perspective. They lose themselves. They Somehow it, it either harkens back to a, a, a kinder time or whatever. They look so ethereal that people are just out of sorts. 
And and the biggest kick I get is when people look at my no idea what it is. Um, but those little bubbles, man, it just t- takes people out of their normal and uh, puts them in a place where maybe they're receptive to that, which might not they they might not think of as being their normal. That is that is so deep. <laughs> oh, it works. No, it I works. love it. I, oh, I, dude, I, and, and and for advertising, it's amazing because sometimes they'll travel blocks and people can see us blocks away. They don't know that we're there, but they do. Yeah. No, and I, I think you're you're such an an interesting uh, person, Jim, and I I always enjoy connecting with you because there there's the surface level of you know the fun hippie bus blowing the bubbles, but then there's also this wonderful heart and and mind that you have and uh, your ability to connect with everybody um, is really a, a joy to it. I can't stop smiling because you always <laughs> just make me laugh. <laughs> Good, brother. Well, you know, it's like when the cop is trying to take me down, he goes, I can't even take you seriously. <laughs> Dude, you're not supposed to. That's, that's, that's not the, you're, that's you're the, the whole point. point. Yeah, I remember the one video. Um, I'm going to show people some clips. Uh, that was, yeah, from auto. There's a whole lineup of cops and you're just chatting with them and they're like desperately trying not to laugh. Well, <laughs> yeah. And one of them isn't even, he's not even trying anymore. He lost his composure, which is perfect. Because that shows somebody who doesn't know how to do their job. And that's yeah. kind of our job to show those who aren't doing their jobs and tell the truth about the whole thing all the way through. And uh, and, and why church? Why did you go for, for that as your kind of uh, name? Because it's a misnomer. <clears throat> um, I Well, okay. Honestly, I when I, when I was a kid... Okay, dude. I, you said you were on with Daniel for three hours, man. I don't know how deep you want to go with this stuff. But <laughs> we'll, 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 start, we'll start with a thing or two. Um, where the, what the hell were we just talking about? Uh, why why church? Church, because I had been part of an organized religion, and I saw that that did damage to my family, and that was my choice. It was I I made the decision to do it, but I brought along my family with it. It did some damage, and I and I realized that uh, when we individually succumb to a, a belief system, even if we don't agree with certain parts of it, uh, we're being led astray. Uh, and and church has such a polarizing feel to it. Uh, when I was younger, I, I didn't have any mentors, so I made up a mentor in my head of a combination between Jesus and Anthony Robbins. I don't know if you know Anthony Robbins, Tony Robbins, right? The the late night. Of course he did, Jim. Of course he did. Right? You know, so the Jesus childhood part, Jim must have been a fascinating young man. I'm sure. Well, I was confused, man. I think I still am. I'm not sure. Um, but this idea that Jesus and Anthony Robbins together, I could like, that's, that made sense to me. Right. And I was adopted and I don't know who my biological father is and I never will. So I'm a, I guess I could make one up. Uh, so I did. And this guy, Jesus, he did a lot of stuff, right. Okay. And none of it was build a church. Okay. Mm-hmm. He didn't build no churches. That was that was not Jesus. Jesus did his thing. And uh, at one point he said, uh, you, if you don't eat my body and drink my blood, um, then you can have no part of the kingdom of heaven. Well, the people around him probably looked like he had three heads. It's like, dude, you're, you're talking about cannibalism right now. It's a misnomer. Throw the people off on the front end, and the people who really want to know will ask long enough, or ask mm. the right questions, stick around long enough to find out. I'd rather just have everybody just fluff it off on the front end, to be quite honest. Uh, that, that's Yeah, it's a fascinating point. And, and the parallels to, to the whole freedom movement, right? Because there's those who just see us from a distance honking horns and waving flags and like what a bunch of crazies or why are they parking their trucks down? But then for those who actually took a step in and talked to to people uh, like yourself and, and, and saw the heart of the people there um, you know, that's where the real connection and the real changing of uh, hearts and minds uh, happens. And uh, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't I thought about that, that parallel, but uh, well, and, and well, that's, I, that's the idea, right? This mm-hmm. idea of church. Uh, the best definition I ever heard of church was it's the organization of matter around spirit. So when you think of the things that have happened over the freedom movement and some of these different things, there was a spirit behind it. And then all of the matter organized around it, i.e. the humans and then all of the, the things that the humans brought to help the other humans and all those things. So that that's my idea of church. Hmm. Well, and I mean, that's, again, a great parallel for what we saw happen at, at the convoy was the, it, it was the spirit and the, the desire for, for freedom and unity. Uh, that that was what held everything together. The 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 fuel runs and the um, the, the food tents and that was all just tertiary, secondary. Um, it was that spirit that um, that brought everyone together in a very powerful way. Oh, man. And then the things you saw happen that were impromptu. 
I mean, people were like, I, I remember at one point, and this is back in Ottawa, when they, they made a hard block out of snow within about a half an hour. It was like 15 people showed up with shovels and they went, oh, we don't want the cars to go through. So they built a great big snow fort basically across the road and nobody told them to do it, you know, and they were cleaning. I like, I don't know, dude. I just never seen anything like it. It's just incredible. Yeah. No, oh, it, it, it uh, and people are mentioning in the, in the chat there too, that yeah, just really seen, seen nothing like it. Uh, future now says convoy was magic and and so many terms from so many people and uh you know what one of the reasons i like bringing uh someone like yourself on is i was um immediately moved by the wide variety of philosophies and and lifestyles and everything that that came together because there was this stereotype that was put out that uh oh it's a bunch of like angry um uh, you know <laughs> Uh, whatever titles they wanted to give us, uh, racists and misogynists and um, et cetera. And like, it, it, there's just, there were so many different characters. Um, yeah, obviously you're, you're not your typical, um, you know, suit and tie conservative uh, <laughs> worker or something. Like it, it just, you break all the stereotypes. And there was, there was so many uh, people I met, like I, I mentioned on the show before, how I got these, um, I didn't know these like painted rocks where there's a whole thing around these these painted rocks and different uh, things like that. And that was never, I'm in a pretty blue collar community and um, that's not something I'd ever come across. And so several times now of these lovely people who had, had made special rocks for me and, and just like meeting these uh, totally different types of people and all together for the same have purposes and actually had a great um conversation on my comments there last night with a guy called angry atheist and uh yeah I, it was great because um he he was actually i guess i we probably both met him at some point because he was in the blue tent by um metcalf and wellington if you remember that square by the terry fox memorial there was a blue tent there right right um Anyway, and so he's a big uh, lover of the freedom movement, and uh, but not a religious individual. And he was uh, thrown off with with uh, some of the topics that came up. And then, but w I had a great chance to just engage him in the comments and uh, discuss how you know it's. I would I would die for your right to disagree with me, and that's what the freedom is is all about. That what makes this country strong, uh, what makes it beautiful, is that we can all uh, believe different things, and we can have our different uh, ways of living. And yet we all come together as the true North strong and free. And um, it, I just, I thought, and especially with a name like angry atheist, it was so wonderful that we could have <laughs> that kind of conversation that I don't think happens many places, uh, but happens all the time in, in our movement. And I, I know you've seen that in the bubble bus too. Oh, for real, dude. I mean, that was what brought me into the whole movement. I got to be honest, was this diversity of, of thoughts, beliefs and uh, ages and like I just I'd never seen such a it, it was a cacophony, but it was symphonious at the same time. It was really incredible. And and that was year, a couple of years ago now. And it's only gotten stronger and uh, more and more uh, mainstream people are starting to clue into the fact that, hey, there's something wrong here. Uh, and, and are looking for answers. And I think that's, that's you know, partly why our success is, uh, you know, has started, has began to increase because, you know, people want to hear. Yeah. And, and our differences, it, it makes us uh, stronger because there's, there's so many uh, people come, even talking to like Danny Bulford last night, how, so for him, when he came to having disagreements about this, it was through his research regarding the, the vaccine and that kind of um, stirred up uh, frustration with him, for me, it was almost the opposite of I was frustrated with 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 mandates. And uh, as someone who really values uh, freedom and liberty, that was what my trigger was. And then afterwards, I started doing some more research. Um, and so we ended up like in same places, but with opposite paths. And and that's just like a tiny sampling. You know, everyone had their their different thing of uh, what what made them realize that something was wrong. And, and you mentioned there that you've been at this for for a while, um, uh, certainly much longer than myself. I, I've said before, I you know now I, I regret of just being that kind of grumpy guy who sat on my couch and complained to my friends. And uh, and and you and your wife have been actively standing against this for a while. So when when did the bubble bus first get connected to the freedom movement? That would have been um, <clears throat> November first, uh, 2020. I guess, right? Been at this for two years, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And what, what was kind of what pushed you over the edge or what led you to get involved in that? Well, we had uh, <clears throat> raised some money. We, we felt for the kids that were having to be inside. Uh, so on the bubble bus for uh, for Christmas, we went out to Santa Claus, got a bunch of gifts <clears throat> and stuff and drove up and down the streets, played music, gave it away. And then for Halloween on 2020, we had done the same thing with candies. Um, we got the bus filled with candies and we set up in a parking lot. Incidentally, well, it wasn't incidentally, it was on purpose. The same parking lot of, uh, uh, the Tartan Tavern in Oshawa, which had been there for almost 40 years since I was a kid, uh, 50 years maybe. Uh, and it was closing down and it had to do with a lot of this nonsense. So we kind of killed two birds with one stone. We're giving away the candies in the same parking lot as the Tartan Tavern. This young lady, Jessica comes up, she's got China marker all over her car and it's, you know, information. And I'm like, wow, cool. She's expressive. We gave her kid a bunch of candy. And then she goes, you know, you should really come to the rally tomorrow. And I'm like, I don't do rallies, man. I'm not, I'm not that. Like, I don't, I'm not a protester. I don't, you know, I don't identify. Right. Um, but she said, oh, you should really come. And then I end up going. And that's when I met Dermot, whom that night, if you don't know Dermot Pomeroy, you might want to talk to that guy at some point. That night schooled the restaurant owner on common law right in front of me. Like, and we end up getting everything that we wanted to because he basically turned it around on him. And I was just overwhelmed by the idea that we could individually take power over this situation. And I saw lots of people attempting to do it. And, uh, you know, for, for a long time, th those lot of people tried to do it in a lot of ways that haven't worked uh, necessarily. I mean, they have to a certain degree, but none of it's been coordinated. And, uh, and oftentimes division creeps in there and ego creeps in there. Uh, and then it becomes counterproductive. Um, but what we're seeing now is a resurgence of just people doing it for the right reason. And as a result, we're getting hella more traction. So. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you mentioned there about not being a protester. I, I have yet to meet someone involved in this who, who really was at protest at all before, um, COVID. It wasn't, it wasn't something that, uh, that people like uh, us did. I mean, we, it, um, and, and that's the, the irony of accusing us of being anti-democratic. I mean, so many of the people involved in this, you know, they, they put up with things that frustrated them and they said, okay, well, next election will will change things. And we tolerated a lot of, um, of things that uh, upset us. And it, it wasn't any of our style, certainly not my style to go wave a flag and yell about something because it was like, uh, you know, whatever, we'll, we'll get rid of them, uh, <laughs> this time, uh, we'll get rid of them next time and, uh, we'll just deal with it. Uh, there's very much this culture in the movement of, well, we, we just, we just pull up our pants. We, we had to work, we, we get the job done and, and we move forward as best we can. It, it's not all these accusations I've seen about a bunch of whiners and blah, blah. It's no, it's like, that's not who these, these people are. Um, they're, they're people who've been silent for a very long time. And then finally, um, you, you, you mentioned, I saw in some videos where uh, the kids is something that really pushed you o over the edge of watching these kids isolated. And, uh, and we all had these different uh, things that finally said, like, this is, this is wrong. This isn't about like some different policy things. This is like fundamental human rights that are being infringed upon by this government. And it's time to, to stand up against them. Honestly, you mentioned the kids. It wasn't that for me. I mean, I was I was distraught about it. And there was many aspects of it, of that, particularly that hurt me uh, when I went to the below 12 vax clinics and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But uh, no, for me, it was the older people, okay. okay, the ones that paid their due. OK, the ones that are in now nursing homes or whatever, and they're taking the, the handles off the doors, isolating, not letting them outside. Dude, one of the most impactful videos we ever did, I don't think you have it here, but somebody might be able to look it up, was one when we went to a retirement home. These people hadn't been out of the rooms for a year. The, the nurses came out with them. They were bawling their eyeballs out and, and bubbles were playing in the air. We were playing 50s music. We were dancing with them. And, and then we got, of course, in trouble for it because you always do. Um, but, it, you know, everybody who saw it was bawling. And the reason they were bawling is because they understand these people do not deserve to be treated. No human being deserves to be treated with that level of isolation. It is, it is cruel and unusual punishment under anybody's uh, measure. 
and 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 oftentimes it's it's self-inflicted in that uh, some people who isolate themselves do that on purpose, but there's others in those situations who did not. They never asked for that. The reason they're in nursing homes, they want to be social with the other people. And, uh, and, and there's so much that we can do about all of this. Okay. It doesn't take much, you know, a nursing home or somewhere close to you, you know, a senior's home somewhere close to you, you can drive up, you can get a little speaker system with a little generator and blow some bubbles and play some music. Anybody can do this. See, this is the thing. This is if I really want to drive home to somebody. Okay. Look, I don't drive the bubble bus because I want to be the guy who drives the bubble bus. Okay. I happen to have a bus. It happens to blow bubbles and I happen to drive it, but it, it what it what it's supposed to do is trigger you into your own thought processes as to how you could get your own kind of thing. It doesn't have to be a bubble bus, doesn't have to be a live from the shed, doesn't have to be any of those things. It has to be something that resonates with you. And if it does, and you come off strong like that, you'll give people the encouragement to hopefully do something similar. So folks, create your own bubble bus, call it the bubble bus. I don't want any royalties. I don't give a flying poof. Okay, blow more bubbles, especially for seniors. I, I love it. I, I hadn't, um, I'll have to get, if, if Christina could post the link to that video, maybe she can track it down. Uh, I'll have to watch that um, sometime. And yeah, it's, it's so, it's just wonderful. And you can, yeah, I, I can see I'm, I'm still just smiling because um, yeah, your love for people is just so evident and uh, <laughs> uh, mi mixed with a little bit of crazy. Yeah, and, man, uh, dude, if we don't go crazy in this world, you're going to go crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, so, so anyway. you, you started to, um, do these kind of things, uh, push some boundaries, uh, for the sake of, of bringing joy back to people. Um, and then, so you said you, and then when no, did you, I, I, hold on, I want to intersect yep, there. Go ahead. Um, it wasn't just to bring joy to other people. Uh, I figured out that my life gets increasingly better when everybody else around me smiles and I don't have the capacity to engage everybody to the point where I can make them smile all the time. So if I can create something that makes them smile, then everywhere I go, my world looks like people are smiling. You know, like even earlier when you were talking about some of the, the way other people look at the things, I honestly don't know the way other people look at the things because I don't listen. I don't read. I, I like haters. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I don't know what the fuck that is. I got lots of them, I'm sure. They're saying all kinds of nasty. But I ain't never read a thing, never will. Because, like, why? Whatever. They've got their own opinion. But if we are on a track that feels good to us, we are seeing smiles around us or whatever, that, that whatever it is that we want to create, then continue that. Amplify that. And take cues from other people that are doing something that are similar. And you can find your own variation, man. Some dude did a bubble bike. Caesar, you're amazing. Uh, hey, put, put, like, That's DJ cool. decks on a bike. Right. And is hooked up bubble machine and stuff. Like, I mean, come on. The uh, people are uh, asking my moderators there of uh, where is that video posted? Is it on your YouTube uh, with the seniors home? Ooh, uh, I'll bet you it's on TikTok. Oh, might be buried away somewhere. We'll have to look for it later. But yeah, um, yeah, they, that... they made me pull down the way. See, what happened was um, the, the one of the OK, we got invited in from the nurses that uh that, that were at that place but then one of the administrators saw that we took video of somebody without their permission and said that the uh you know that was against the policy and that's why they took it down so anyway apologize uh, i see yeah well usually I, I in my experience you get in trouble if you have too much fun uh, I, I said some of these things in these um experiences remind me of as a kid at the swimming pool of <laughs> you know if the fun went too high you'd start to attract the attention of the lifeguards and then there's a threshold. If you're having too much fun, then the lifeguards get on the whistle and no, stop it. Too much fun. The fun level has risen too high and you must stop. <laughs> okay. Well then it's dip and dive fun, man. It's guerrilla tactics. That's why the, the bus is mobile, man. You go have fun. And then when they don't like it, you drive away. <laughs> you go have fun in the next place. Exactly. Um, and so you, you started um, uh, doing it. So obviously much more than just going to some of these protest events, you were, um, almost like an ice cream truck, uh, you know, just going around and, and spreading joy um, as you could. Um, and then are, are you retired or do you work as well? Uh, well, no, I haven't. Uh, I haven't worked for quite a while. I've built uh, I built Internet things and some other marketing things. Well, that's and work. I do, yeah. I do when the summer get when the weather gets nice, I do landscaping. Mm. Uh, I really like working with my body. Uh, we're working on a farm right now, preparing a greenhouse. 
So I, I really love the physical labor, um, but I'll do it more now. Um, I'm not well off, but I've found a way to not spend a lot of money. And, uh, and I have a residual income source that allows me to be able to do that. So now what I'm doing is I'm just trying to, uh, try to create community so that people have an option when, when, or if things go south, basically. Yeah. And I've often explained, you know, sometimes there can be, there's, there's two extremes as there often are of, there can be these really conservative types that, you know, unless you're, you're really you're know, saving a bunch of dollars and you're, you're making this certain level of salary, you know, then you're not a success. And then there can be the other extreme liberal types of where uh, it falls into dependency and you're relying on payouts and subsidies and stuff like that. And uh, those are, are both an, a problem in my mind. One can become workaholic and just obsession with wealth. And the other one is you're not, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not supporting yourself and you're, you're draining the resources of someone else uh, in order to support yourself. And those resources are there for people uh, who, who actually can't uh, get them themselves for, for various reasons. And so for someone like yourself, it, it's like, as long as you're able to support yourself and, and your family, then, you know, there should be, um, in my mind, no, no judgment as to, uh, what, what lifestyle, uh, you choose, you know, you're not, it's not a drain on the, uh, the, the tax uh, resources and you've found a way to create a sustainable lifestyle for yourself. And I think that's really awesome. Well, it's it's an ongoing thing of uh, maintenance. You can't just do something once and expect it to be done. And you have to be versatile in your approach. I've always been a, a self-employed person. And I've always thought that self-employment is the key to, uh, you know, our economies, you know, as well as our own welfare. Because I worked in a factory for like 10 years, just about went out of my mind. <laughs> you know, I thought I was having heart attacks and stuff. And it was just nuts. It was all stress because it was not where I should have been, right? And then when I finally got out, um, I, I decided that I was never, that one of the central Burning Man principles is self-sufficiency. And basically mm -hmm. what that means, when you go to the desert to this big party, um, you know, basically for a week, you have to bring in all your own water. There's nothing to buy. You don't have any money. You have to bring in all your own food, all of your own everything, okay? And you have to be self-sufficient. Um, that for me has been a bit of an obsession for a long time. I'm on the cusp right now of becoming actually self-sufficient, but funny enough, it's going to make my life harder. It's really weird. Like this is, and this is what people don't know. And I wish they understood this because if they did, they, they, they key into something absolutely critical. You have to give more than you take for an extended period of time before you ever actually get to be free. When I'll qualify free, on, under this, what I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about free, free from the links to financial systems, free from debt, free from basically the ability to be able like build your own clothes, build your own house, grow your own food and do it all without having to spend money somewhere. Mm. That I believe is becoming a real human being. I think that that's really how we're supposed to live. And I want to do that. And um, it's hard. <laughs> and it's not comfortable. And there's bugs. And there's temperature. And there's heavy things and shit. Like, I mean, literally, poop. Yeah, poop exactly. Stuff. And it's, it's, it's just a different thing. And, and some people might call it regression. I, I find it to be, uh, it's kind of scary. It's kind of daunting. But it's cool as hell. Yeah, it's very human. I, it's it's the same reason people, uh, I, I think, I don't remember if it was you or, or someone else I had the conversation with about, it's interesting how everyone goes to like campgrounds, for example, in, in the summertime, and they love the, the community, they love being surrounded by nature, there's something very like, um, just raw and natural about cooking over a fire, and uh and yet then they all disappear back to their suburban wastelands and concrete jungles, um, but then they're so excited to go back to the campgrounds. Now, understandably, with our, our winters, it proves to be uh, much more difficult. Um, but it is, I think, it in the community is a big part of that, of what people love about campgrounds. Um, or when I go backpacking to, to the hostel culture and stuff, it's, it's the people, it's the community that makes it uh, really special. And uh, it's interesting to talk about regression. My 
my some of my ancestors are what's called old order Mennonite or Amish uh, similar group. And so, I mean, they, they never really uh, stopped. Uh, they didn't regress. They just never uh, progressed. And um, <laughs> work. They know how to work. Oh, they know how to work. They do. And of course, the, the, um, I, I know enough of the community that they, the grass isn't always greener on the other side and they have their issues as well. But something they definitely excel at that is that focus on sustainability um, and on community. I mean, if you, a number of them have actually started moving out to the East Coast for cheap land. And if, uh, if anyone can, can figure out how to uh, develop the land out there, it, it would be them because they're incredibly uh, gifted at just making do with whatever they have. My, my grandmother actually used to take um, tea bags and dry them out after she finished them to, to reuse them to try to get, you know, a little extra bit of tea uh, out of them. And I grew up where we used uh, milk bags we'd uh, cut them open. I don't know if other people do this, but you'd cut off the top of the milk bag and use it as a sandwich bag uh, afterwards. <laughs> so just it really, um, it's interesting that this whole, like, you know, the whole green reduce, reuse, recycle became this trendy thing. And uh, I was just like, well, that's just called being cheap. We've been doing that for a long time. <laughs> you know, my parents were Scottish. I get it. Yeah. It's, it's being frugal. I mean, we never went as far as the, the, the sandwich bags in the milk bag. That's cool, you know. <laughs> you yeah, know. Of, they're tough little bags, too. Like, it's a pretty tough plastic <laughs> that's used, so it actually works quite well. You know, it was funny. I used to work for this old guy, and uh, I, 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 he was in this really fancy house. It was really old, and he took care of every single little detail. He'd iron his underwear and everything. And uh, at one point, I, I was in there, and I was pouring the bag um of milk and i held the back of the bag you know how the open side you have to hold the other side or else it gets all sloppy yeah when i held the back of that bag it was a revelation to this guy he'd been pouring milk for 10 years couldn't figure out why he always smelt it smelt it you know and but isn't that a thing that and, and, and this guy's a really smart he was he was the leader he was the head of the historian society for oshawa or something you know, so he had such an attention to detail on certain things and the other things he just missed it. And, and dude, we are all like that to a certain degree. And specifically in the movement, I find that there are a lot of people that are real kind of, you know, they, they got their way of doing the things, but they don't understand all the ways are the ways of doing the things as long as we're doing the same things. I just said to highlight a comment there from Anonymous, uh, you can flip your underwear around and reuse it, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have heard. I've done that before, but only out of necessity. That wasn't, no, that was nasty. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, well, I wanted to, uh, well, first I, wa I wanted people to kind of understand a, a bit of uh, who you are. And, and then because it, it clashes so hugely then with, um, I want to talk a bit a bit about these, these interactions uh, with police and uh, and not for the sake of, of you telling a sob story, but for people understanding uh, some of these these overreaches and these concerns uh, that are going on. Because uh, like when I saw this this video of your arrest, I was just especially having gotten to know you before I saw this video, you know, and it there is a learning experience for me because, uh, yeah, I, I will say some of these other protests that I've seen in the past. And I was that guy who saw a clip of police brutality and assumed that, oh, they must have deserved it or something, you know, must have led to that. And uh, I was that guy and I had um, a bit of a blind trust in in the police force. And um, I still I value our police force and I, um, I support the need for good policing. But I also understand that there are uh, definitely people who take advantage uh, of their power. And I've like watched it happen uh, to friends of mine. And it's definitely given me and, an, you know, I'm never going to look at those clips necessarily the same way. Um, I'm not going to jump to assuming the person was entirely innocent, but I'm not going to jump to any conclusion basically without uh, hearing both sides. Um, and, and so I want to show you, so the viewers, this video from um, Toronto. This was at um, the was this this first arrest? Was it at the Worldwide Freedom Rally as well, or which? No, that was Young Dundas Square in January of 2021. And and was this? the first time you had like negative interactions with police like this, or had they talked to you much before? Uh, no, the week before they had, st <laughs> they had stuffed an eight, $880 ticket in the, in my fur hood. For what? For being there. Ah, uh. yeah. They just, they just, 
They pick and choose, man. There was hundreds. But I was a bit of a peacock because I had the bubble bus and they knew it. So they never had to get my ID. They just ran my plates and gave right. me you know what I mean? It, it was an easy, an easy person to grab because they all recognized you. Um, but so backstory to this before I play the clip, uh, what's happening here before you came to the square? Uh, well, we'd arrived like probably about 20 minutes earlier. We had left the bubble bus, which was parked uh, a block behind the square. Uh, and I started filming as soon as we left the bubble bus. So we're walking up on the uh, Young Dundas Square. And we anticipated that a buddy of mine, Dermot, was going to be speaking and I was to be filming him. <clears throat> so I'm filming him walking up to where he's going to be speaking. We get there. There's a bunch of cops. The cops probably outnumbered the people at that point. There was not too many. You'll see in the clips. Mm. Um, but the cops probably outnumbered them. And a few cops were talking to this one lady and I kind of started filming. And then what you see happens, happens. But and then after this, I don't know how long of a clip you're going to run, but the, the whole clip is about two hours and 20 minutes. So it's the 20 minutes leading up to me getting arrested and then <clears throat> me getting put in the back of the car. And then the guy I was supposed to be filming picked up my camera and then filmed the uh, maskless uh, shopping and shit that happened after that. So, yeah, I'm just going to show your arrest here, but <clears throat> and you'll see the officer. Uh, say that you've been warned and uh, i mean you can watch people can watch the whole live stream and you you walked right up to the spot they like if there was a warning you would have uh it would have been on video um but anyway we'll show the clip here Yes. Sir. But I want to have the black of the Sir. Right. Sir. Hello. That is my property. Okay. Hello, sir. You've been advised to leave at this point right now? You're not leaving at this point right now? I haven't been advised. Yes, you have been. I just officers, got here. No. Officer Sorry spoke to you a little bit earlier on. Nobody spoke to me today. I've been recording all morning. Yes, and we've spoken to you. Yeah, I, have, I have spoken to okay. no officers today yet. Okay. You are the so very we're first one I've engaged. Don't leave at this point right now. You're going to be arrested for obstruct since you've already been here before. Okay. okay. So if I, what you're saying is, if I don't leave right now. Yes. What's going to happen? You'll be arrested Freedom. under the criminal code. Freedom. For yeah. Obstruct yeah. justice. Obstructing justice. Yes. Freedom. Yeah. And obstructing. Okay. Stop. So Freedom. the charge, the charge is Freedom. that by being here, okay. I, I am obstructing justice. Okay. No, no. Fuck you. I, that must be hard for you to watch, uh, Jim. And I'm <clears throat> sorry for that. I think um, no, it, it gets me emotional. It uh, it must. It, um... It's past. It's past. It's funny because uh, yeah, no, it's, it's all good. Mm. Yeah, it's and I just think it's important for the viewers to see. And and that's I wanted to chat to you a bit and just um, show your heart uh, to these these people and um, let them understand the kind of man you are. And then to be uh, treated like that by. Um, our, our police force. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm getting tear head again. I, I cried when I first saw that video cause I'd already met you and I didn't know that you'd gone through that and just the joy and even the respect for the police that, that you continue to, sh to show, I mean, respectfully dis disagreeing and obviously you hold your ground and, um, you've, uh, we'll talk about that. You've learned more about uh, your rights and such through this process, but, um, I still don't see you, you don't hurdle insults at the police and I, I don't see you, um, you know, actively harassing them. And I just, that speaks very much to your character and to go through something like that and to still 
believe in, you know, civil society and, uh, and to continue to do what you do. Um, yeah, s- speaks very strongly to, to the man you are. Hey, brother, I think I might have just lost your sound. Oh, test, test, test. Okay, I'm good. Okay, we're back. Yeah, thank you, brother. Um, You know, that 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 little clip is hard to watch, okay? And it's hard for me to watch, okay? <laughs> Partly because I scream like a girl. And that was one of the <laughs> accusations, right? It's like, you scream like a girl, you scream like you should be screaming like a girl. Dude, I didn't see it coming. I, I just, like, I, I literally... I, I figured I'd have some chance to prepare getting arrested. I, I didn't, it came out of left field. So I, I was so, and, and then, the, and then everybody's like, Oh, he's so fucking concerned about his phone. Was, yeah. I was concerned about my phone. That was the evidence of what had just happened. Yeah. And I, and I needed to, I, I had to have that evidence. And I, they, they broke my thumb in the process. I don't know if you know that, but they, they broke I'd my heard thumb. That, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and it, it just, yeah. afterwards it was fine. Okay, like once I well, okay, well, let me define fine. Um, they they put my my uh, my hands in cuffs, but two sets of cuffs, and I had a big fur coat on, and they put it behind my back, and it wasn't that limber. My fur coat was big, and I found out after that these cuffs are self tightening cuffs. Okay, so once they ratchet in, they don't ratchet out, and I'm they're throwing me in the back of this box with a great big fur coat on. And with my with my hands behind it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and they were on that for about three and a half hours and then on the on the left hand i had uh you know nerve damage for about a month and then the right hand probably about six seven months so but the way they treated me after that like after when i got out of processing and everything into the jail and stuff was wonderful I mean, they gave me back my jacket and, you know, and uh, so, and, and I knew like whenever you're dealing, see, the problem is people think that they're dealing with a police force. They are. Okay. There is a force behind the police, but the policemen and the police women are individuals that are yes, willingly subjecting themselves to that force. Most probably believing that that force is operating out of the goodness of what they can do. But we have to understand we're dealing with individuals, okay? Like that's the Church of Bubbles ethos. We're all our own individuals. So, dude, I can't can't address that person's individual background and needs to be there and all that stuff. So, Mm -hmm. like, I can't can't fault the individuals involved. Like my wife goes, oh, I see that guy. I'll know who it is. Dude, I don't even recognize. I've seen probably 10 of the cops. There's a couple I do, but most I don't even, Mm -hmm. you know, because like, whatever man sometimes it's circumstantial maybe that person just lost his wife and has to come to work or something like i don't know right yeah. so we, we are our, our, we have to have empathy and compassion for our fellow beings first and foremost because our fellow beings the freedom people or whatever the, this thing is called uh are sometimes dressed in uniforms and sometimes they're dressed in funny hairstyles and sometimes they're you know in a wheelchair yeah and and that um that ability to step back and say that um, you know we're we're not going to fight fire with fire and uh, you well, look at they got better fire they got bigger fire <laughs> they got way bigger more fire, fire. I, you know it's funny when I'm on top of the bus it's like people say oh you know they, they got all these bullets and I said man I can blow more bubbles than they can bullets and I'm telling you we're going to matrix this thing we're turning into a cartoon the bubbles are going to catch the bullets in midair and they're just going to drop <laughs> <laughs> we're going to fight fire with bubbles you got it dude. Wow, how else you fight fire? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. And that, and so much um, uh, re- respect for you. And uh, obviously, this is still like an ongoing uh, issue. Like, so then what, what happened from there? Were you charged? Yeah, uh, I got charged with um, obstruct police. And uh, Obstructing I, I police. Yes, I obstructed them somehow. I, I was in their way, <laughs> whatever that means. Um, they were trying to like do some break dancing, and oh, I guess you were underneath them. You got in the way of it. I don't. Well, you know, and and to those of you who don't like police, I'm going to give you a little bit more fuel. When I was down on the ground there, what happened was the first time I was down, I had my phone on on my chest, between my chest and the ground, and my my hands in front of me. Okay, and they're trying to rip my hands. That's what I'm saying. Get my phone. My, 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 I didn't want to. They couldn't get my hands out from in front of me. So three of them picked me up. And at that point, I put the phone in my mouth. 
Okay, and I bit the phone, broke the phone. Mm -hmm. So when you see my chin being still in the, I, this is for, I never watched this video, right? So I'm looking at it, I'm going, oh, that's what happened. When you see the hair- You haven't seen that video? I have, but I don't look at it too oh, close. Yeah, you know I what I mean? Like I, yeah. I saw it enough to see it, now I know what happened. But now I'm watching it, I, I was forced to watch it again. So when the, when the hair chin, the hair on the chin was static, that's when it was in my mouth. And I, okay, Sonny got home, Sonny got home, right? And I, that's when I spat it forward to my friend Dermot a couple mm. of feet. And then another cop, there was four of them, and then they got me down, and that's when they cuffed me and did all that shit. But anyway, I just, yeah. I like accuracy. Yeah. I really want I really want the record to reflect all of the nuances of truth. Did you hear that? T-R-U-T-H. Truth. It's... It is a it is a real thing. Uh, whatever much. the CBC tells you, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's out there. You gotta look for it, but it's there. Yeah. Usually in the hands of your local live streamer, I would suggest. <laughs> Kudos, seek, seek the truth, and and you will find it. Um, Dude, it's there. It, it, it can't go away. It's the only thing to be left standing when everything else falls. And and are you? I saw a number of people were asking, are you pursuing like like legal challenges on that? Of ah, uh, uh, like, whatever. You know what? Of course, you'd say that whatever like here's the thing okay look this is going to go out to millions and millions of people hi hey look my name's jim if you want to make a fortune be a gym chaser chase my ambulance i could make you rich forever but i'm just not going to invest a lot of emotional effort if you want the facts come to me i'll make you rich does that work for you <laughs> no not very much an, an attorney i'm saying like if there's a whatever like honestly that's how i feel if there was an attorney that was passionate about it, they want to come in. I believe I believe in justice. I believe that a lot of crappy things went on. And I believe that I am going to have to fight it, at least in my own self-defense, because I now got however many tickets I got out of the deal. Um, well, that that criminal thing, no. Shit, I got off topic, didn't I? We were talking about the criminal thing. That's fine. Um, okay, so yeah. Anyway, they put me in the back of the cruiser for about, you know, and then shifted me in vehicles a couple times. Uh, for about three hours and then I ended up getting out at midnight that night and I signed a sheet uh, that had conditions on it. The conditions were that I couldn't be anywhere between the lake, the DVP, the uh, Bloor and Spadina. I couldn't be anywhere in that geographic radius and um, oh what else? Oh I couldn't contravene any of the whatever act thing and something else. Okay so I had to be on eggshells anytime I was going anywhere. But what I did was I, I went through my lawyer to get some of these things taken off so I could go back in. I think you've got that clip there somewhere on uh, yeah. with Menzies and stuff. But uh, so that's what they tried to get me for when I had actually already got alleviated from it. And they said it just wasn't in their system or whatever the deal was. Yeah, uh, we can show that clip there too. So yeah, that, that wasn't the end of your... Um uh struggles so this is a clip from uh um the uh rebel news and uh yeah we'll just run it here so this was you came back for uh, one of the world uh wide freedom rallies correct yeah the one's <laughs> happening this saturday buddy but yeah, uh, different shout out. same place though same place on any of this i really i wasn't i'm not tim the question arises what makes a mature man uh so many hours driving a bus blowing bubbles and playing music in the first place because people are hurting people are hurting the isolation is hurting people they're not able to touch one another they're not able to see loved ones in in the hospital right you, your, your mom's dying and you you know what are you kidding me come on i don't care what's going around it's not worth that it's not worth abandoning the old people you know like if they want to do something smart allocate the resources to the ones that have the problem and the highest at risk or the highest age you know and if people want to isolate isolate but don't isolate this the healthy i mean asymptomatic what the hell is that it means you're healthy but a potential care what the hell is that no healthy healthy David Menzies for Rebel News here at Queen's Park. Well, folks, we were here to cover the demonstration. Originally, it didn't look like there was going to be any arrests or harassment or ticketing. Uh, but look at this. We are atop the bubble bus. This is the bus that belongs to Jim Kerr. He likes to drive his bus around at these demonstrations, playing some music, emitting some bubbles. And for some reason, as you can see, law enforcement has descended en masse 
uh, to allegedly arrest him or ticket him. I'm not clear why that is right now. But we hopped aboard the bus because we wanted to chronicle uh, how the police were going to treat this uh, individual. Um, because I can't see a crime in driving in circles. So, well, maybe there's a carbon crime. Maybe Greta Thunberg would throw the, <laughs> the book at Jim. But we're going to see how this plays out in the minutes and hours ahead. So what, what's going on here? Why has the bubble bus been pulled over? Um, well, they cited us for excess noise and uh, no front license plate. And then they pulled me over. They knew my name. And uh, they said that uh, I am now in breach of conditions on my bail. Oh, a bail for what, Jim? On bail for obstruct police. Really? And what was the nature of that obstruction charge? I was filming a friend who was to speak, and then the three cops tackled me, broke my thumb, and uh, took me to jail. Do you, do you find you've been, been targeted because, well, you're giving the anti-political uh, correct message of stop the lockdown? I, I can't say, yeah! It feels like they're targeting me. It's like she wants to arrest me for whatever reason she can. I'm trying to give her the things that she wants, and she says now that she, like we have the bail condition thing sorted. And we've given them copies right now. She's giving them copies, but she doesn't want to see it on the phone. They want a hard copy. So I'm trying to get somebody to get this over to Kinko so I can get a hard copy to give these officers so we can have peaceful resolution. Because I'm Jim's wife, Thundra, and uh, they pull us over because we have a plate on the front and we're like okay give me a break look at all these vehicles going by that don't have plates yeah. you obviously had our number then they give me three tickets for um, over three hundred dollars for what the I don't know and then now they're trying to arrest Jim are they meaning to uh, handcuff you and take you away I hope not I mean, I did that the first time and they broke my thumb. And the look in her eyes towards me, I'm afraid, I don't know. I don't know, I don't trust them. They hurt me the last time and they want to arrest me a second time for whatever reason. And they, I'm giving them evidence and they're not accepting it. So I don't know what's going on. Like it's, it really scares me that this could be happening in our country, man. This is, this is scary. Well, well Jim, I'm, I'm going to see what the officers have to say and yeah. well, I'll, I'll get back to you, okay? Cool. Hi officers, I was just wondering, can you please tell me uh, why he's being uh, arrested or pulled over? Officer Boyce, can you, uh, give, I, I'm just trying to get your side of the story, officer. Conducting an investigation here. Oh, an investigation, okay. The, for a day that was going quite merrily, first day of spring, over 10 degrees, sunny, um, it was a, a good time being had by all, but not quite. I guess, I guess the Toronto Police Service have a quota. They've got to, you know, arrest somebody <laughs> to meet their uh, catch and release target, so. I'll leave it at that, and people can watch the rest there on on Rebel. But yeah, it goes on there, and and finally, you said it took about three hours to get it all sorted out. Uh, yeah, it was about three hours. Uh, Menzies is great, though. At the end of the three hours, he goes, "So should we do a victory lap?" And I go, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, what's your next destination?" I said, "Well, we're going to Nathan Phillips Square." He goes, well, "Let's do it." So we we continued the interview on top of the bus. Uh, you know, screaming at the uh, eight horses that are walking down the one side of the street. Just craziness, man. I don't even yeah. know. Man. Well, and I, I love just the, um, we were talking about before we went live of uh, the the humor of it all, which is obviously lost on them. Uh, but, <laughs> but like you're, the whole shtick is so, is so wonderful. And it, as you said, it always just makes me smile. And do, do, do you know why though? Because police are professional pricks. <laughs> No, honestly. Okay, so here, here's a confession. I believe myself to be Papa Prick, okay? Because I can be, I have a very prickly nature, okay? And, and because I don't like that aspect of myself, I created the Church of Bubbles so I could be more, less pricky. But both are necessary. And the, and the Church of Bubbles, if you want to break it down from a geometric standpoint, I believe very strongly the Church of Bubbles' uh, origins to be in sacred geometry and a lot of things that are, you know, a little ethereal. And uh, if you look at space, if you were to take, you know, say four balls and put them touching each other, the negative space, the, the empty space in between it almost looks like a top, a spinning top that is quite prickly in nature. So all of the universe requires not only the bubbly, the smooth, the, but also those pricks in between. 
you know, it, it requires both. So, you know, we can't, we can't just be one-sided on anything. Uh, and, uh, so some people asking there just to clarify of like, um, how that ended off. So, uh, yeah, basically they, they were asking you for, you know, proof of your release conditions and you had uh, it on, you had it on a digital version and then, uh, they made you go get it printed. Um, no. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I'll, I'll give you the rest on that. Yeah. So what happened was, yeah, we were waiting to get this. We had several parties out trying to get this thing printed and bringing it back. Um, and in the meantime, one of the cops, I'm talking to one of the cops and he goes, no, the only reason you can be in this area is, uh, for something and to seek legal counsel. And I looked down on the other side of the bus. You can see him in that clip that you just saw there. The guy with a nice tan jacket. Yeah. He's an indigenous lawyer. And I go, oh yeah, I'm here to see my legal counsel. And I went over to the other side of the bus and said, Hey man, do you want to be my legal counsel? He goes, sure. And he goes, and he oh, goes I didn't down. know this. Yeah, dude. And he goes down to the station, signs some shit, and let they let me go. <laughs> he signed up as your legal counsel right there. He he just went to the station and did the thing, and I went away. I didn't sign anything. I didn't say anything. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, clearly, clearly, just just harassment um, there. Um, how much time uh, do you have? I just uh, kind of figure out how much I want to go through here because I wanted to well, talk I'm a little bit about myself. Man. Okay, you're enjoying yourself. Good. I never, get a, good. I never I get a chance to do this. Just so you know. <laughs> well, good. You just um, uh, you just tell me because this is really interesting. Um, I hadn't heard kind of the whole tale of it. So obviously they were targeting you. I mean, you don't just had you had nothing to do with any of this freedom stuff, and you'd just been rolling through the city. There's no way multiple police officers for three hours. It would harass you. It really does beg the question of like, and we talked about it with Danny Bulford last night. I mean, police resources are limited. And it's it's crazy to me that how many officers were standing there for, you know, how many hours to deal with bubble blowing Jim? Like it's <laughs> it's it's just nuts. Well, um, well, that's that's not even the worst of it. I mean, when when we were arrested, when it was arrested, the first clip that you showed uh, that week and the week before they had brought in all kinds, same kinds of people that they brought in over for Ottawa. Okay. With all the badges and the numbers and all the, and, and, and we found out subsequently that these people are corrections officers and Brinks truck operators that have their gun licenses that are given temporary powers to be able to come in with crowd control and stuff. Right. So, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons and some of them are private contractors to the city. So, you know, like you've got Tory's army and you've got this and whatever, right? Like it's, it's all a big chest of funds that I'm sure that they slosh back and forth in order to do the bidding of, of a few politicians who are not necessarily, necessarily God, my God, almost exactly not doing the will of the people. And that's a problem. You know, that's, that's the people's money. And, and when we don't have enough money to make our car payments and, and eat, it's not because there's not enough there and we didn't do enough work to make it happen. It's because somebody's stealing it from us. Yeah. And, and Danny was telling us last night that he was, he was interrogated by a homicide detective uh, after he was arrested. And it's like, is there really nothing more important for a well-paid homicide detective to be investigating right now um, than this? And, uh, but yeah, it, 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 it's, yeah, it's really a crime against all the people because those are, they're public servants and, uh, you know, that name has taken on a different meaning for most people. I think they forget the, the servant part. Um, no, it's that, the public part they don't, for, they've forgotten. Yeah. No, cause they're still servants. They serve themselves or they serve their or overlords. they serve the masters. They're serving the force. They're That's serving a good point. the edicts that are coming down from on high. So that yes, they are still servants, but they forgot the public part. Hmm. Well said. And uh, so anyway, they, you, you had a lot of backstory in, in this whole uh, movement, um, obviously way more than myself and uh, some of the other guests we've had on. And so, uh, well, thank you for one, for being in that fight for, for so uh, long. It, uh, it sounds always weird to call it a fight because it's like, you're getting, you're getting fought by, by them. Um, you're just trying to live your life and, and bring some, some joy. <laughs> the defense, let's call it the defense. The, the defense. Sure. Yeah, you've been in this defense for a while, standing on guard for thee, as it were. And then when was your first, uh, when did you hear about the convoy? When did that come across your plate? About, uh, two weeks or three weeks before it happened, about three weeks before it happened. All right. Well, it was it was um, just still out west, and we were seeing these the clips of it come up once in a while, and yeah, 
is it 10 trucks? Is it a hundred thousand? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then did you pay much attention to be honest? No, no. And, and neither, like it was hard to know. It was so censored. Right. And that I, you'd see these clips and then there'd be claims that, Oh no, that's from some other convoy. That's from the States. It's not real. And it was so hard to know what to believe. And it wasn't like you could just pop on and like, oh, Tire Roaster's Garage, he'll have that. Like, if you had tried to search for that, which which I did, I actually did try to track down whether this convoy thing was real, and uh, no YouTube channels would come up. There were people no filming way. it, but impossible to find. <laughs> and and then, so when when did you when did it become real for you? Uh, define real. Uh, when was your first interaction? Did you go to an overpass or did you just head right to Ottawa or what did that look like? Oh, okay. Um, we left the night before we no, Yeah. We left the night before. So, uh, the Thursday is when we arrived, uh, and we arrived at nighttime on Thursday and, uh, we had been there a month previous and we had stayed for, uh, it was like three weeks or something. Uh, I don't know if you saw the thing where we drove around Trudeau's house and shot the oh, laser no, right. service and stuff. No, anyway. You shot what? Lasers at the Secret Service. Because <laughs> cool. yeah, 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 we were playing music and shooting lasers and all the Secret Service come running out from the, the place where Trudeau lives and stuff. You yeah. drove by the Prime Minister's house and Sean, yeah. I think Sean is a better word than shoot in this situation. Uh, you Sean, shot, yeah. Sean no. lasers. At the at the Secret no, Service. We were, no, we just do what the bubble bus was doing. It just happened to be on the Prime Minister's lawn. Oh, th you had like a little spinning laser thing on it or something. No, dude, I got like two watt. La I got some lasers, man. They're, they're cool. <laughs> they're really cool. I can't imagine they appreciated that too much. I can't imagine I appreciate them not letting us talk to the guy. So what? <laughs> oh, yeah. you're great. You're great. So what, what happened? I hadn't heard about this. So what happened when you shone the lasers at the Secret Service? Whatever, you know, they darted in amongst the trees and then they just kind of backed off. They realized, you know, it was only a convoy. It was like a convoy of about, I don't know, like 20 cars. It was Unity One, remember? Unity, the, right? And then, mm -hmm. uh, and we did the hunker down the, the originally uh, a month before the thing. So when we came back, this was old hat sauce. We'd already been out in the bitter cold for three weeks out there a month before. Uh, and this was us coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, we came back on the Thursday and the, I'll tell you that I, I remember the one thing that stuck out to me out of all of it, out of all like coming, coming in the night before we, we got in like hours before the convoy started rolling through. Okay. Hours before, like, I don't know how many hours, but just hours. Right. And I'm looking, I've seen the people on the overpasses, which is just amazing. It's just amazing. Yeah. I can't fucking believe it. it's incredible. It's incredible. But then it gets dark and the snowstorms ripping in. And we are somewhere like way past anywhere that anybody is, um, like Belleville area or something like that. I don't even know. And there's this one dude, one or dudette, I couldn't tell, holding this little flag on this overpass. There was nobody else there. Nobody else there. It was late at night. There's a snow, like it was just. In the middle of a snowstorm. That's amazing. No idea who that person is, but that's my falling man or whatever. You know what I'm mm. saying? That, that, whoever that person is, that is ex that's the heart of the whole freaking thing right so so long as there's one person willing to stand and wave the flag yeah alone, it's, it's beautiful alone it's easy mm -hmm. when there's tons yeah. everybody loves it when there's time you know we auto was just glory fest because like oh the people yay dude i met these little people out in little uh goderich i think no it's got no it's even further it was like way western ontario and there's four or five of them been on a street corner in the middle of the city square of uh, you know a thousand people everybody knows who they are and they're every single week no matter what nobody listens to them and they don't care heroes man those are heroes yeah. not ones that drive around in buses or have nice live show sheds or whatever yeah no and i say all the time but there's so many so many unsung heroes uh, of this that that I'll probably never be able to get in contact with, you know, they just, they, they headed away and they're, they're still doing their thing and we'll never know their names. And like people who slept in their cars, uh, you know, slept in tents for weeks or stood alone in blizzards on an overpass, waving a flag. Um, I, I had that experience actually one time too. It was a, it was a random other weekend. It, it was well past the convoy and I was just driving along, uh, at night, um, QEW or something, I think. And uh, and I see uh, an older gentleman just up on an overpass waving his flag. 
um, <laughs> and just just as a way to to stand uh, there, and I just uh, I thought it was amazing. <laughs> but you see, that's all it really takes, honestly, because that guy he had impact on. He doesn't know who or how, but he most certainly had impact on himself because when he went back home, when he had a shower, he thought, "I deserve that shower, man. I went out there and did my thing," and like you know probably in his mind it'll never come resolved that he actually did something but guess what he did it you noticed we're talking about it however many people are on here now know it and how who knows where that'll go yeah yeah right and it... we are powerful we individually we have power we just have to claim it we just got to use it we just got to step into it. we got to get away from the fear and all the you know hesitation and i encourage people keep on that note of like keep those flags uh on the car and, and keep going out to uh, to to those those rallies and because even something as small as those flags and I remember we talked about it uh, with Walter Hoffman about where he likes to just um, like encouraging people to just go for a walk uh, he was encouraging fellow seniors to just go for a walk with a flag draped around your shoulders right and I, I know it starts to get old and we're very much in this like uh, grind stage or I feel like it but I mean this is this is just another month for you like you you've been at this for for so long and it's so impressive the energy you keep up. Um, because yeah, admit there's like, uh, there, there's days where I get discouraged and this say like, is this ever going to, to change? And, um, you know, you, you get, you start to feel uh, defeated and then, you know, then I have another story, like what happened to the cadets and it just fires me up again and said, no, like, this is important. I need to keep, keep doing this, keep showing up. And, uh, so in whatever small way people are doing that, whether it's just having a, a flag on your car or like some of the people who've reached out to me and an older lady who, um, she sends out letters and that's that's her uh, thing is she watches these videos she puts down information and resources and then she mails out letters uh, to to people who aren't necessarily watching these videos and yeah I heard from people um, some some seniors who hosted uh, viewing like parties because some of their friends didn't know how to use YouTube like my grandparents don't have YouTube and uh, they'd get their friends together and they'd watch the live streamers I love this. Let me tell you a story. We were in, uh, I don't know, it was, uh, it was by Belleville again, a little town. And this guy comes up to me, he says, really like what you do. You should come by my house sometime. I said, where is it? 10 minutes up the road? I'll come now. We go there and the family, the, 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 the first of all, the kid has an imitation of me on one of my videos down pat. Okay. It's freaking me out. And I'm like, this, what? That's awesome. You know, we gotta be careful. Okay. Like we, as people who have a platform and can do, we gotta be careful. Cause they, it, there's all ages are watching, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so anyway, they, they gave me the story and then their parents end up pulling up right afterwards to confirm the whole thing. And that's exactly what they were doing in one room. They were watching mainstream media, the other room, they were watching the YouTube and all they had to do was bring that laptop over and go, Hey, this is what they're saying is happening over there right now. And mm -hmm. they, their whole thing, they went, but why would they lie? <laughs> you know, <laughs> great question. Great what question. the media lies the more we get people asking why would they lie the more answers we'll get of would lie perfect <laughs> and that encouraged me like nobody's business so that is it action 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 we can all do anything necessary tiny little things are all the thing people think that oh no you can do it because you have the no 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 if we are doing our things right we are leveraging you because you're the ones that matter you're the ones that have the stories and you're the ones that can change all the things and I'm, I'm just, I, I, you say, I get excited, dude, I've only been at this two years. I know people have been at it for longer than me. When I came in, there's a whole handful been at it for a year and a half. Yeah. You know, the Chris guys of the world and Kelly Ann's and Vlad's and all those guys, man. And they get slagged on all the time. You know, it, it's funny. It, it, you have any measure of success here and you know what people are going to call you? They're going to call you a grifter. I didn't even know what the hell that meant, but I guess it means that you're making money off of the backs of the movement or something like that, which you know, I was schooled in very, very succinctly, very, uh, there's a guy named Double MC. He unfortunately passed um, just less than a year ago. The last song he did was a Bubble Bus song. Can you imagine? Um, I didn't know there was a Bubble Bus song. Yeah, that's because it hasn't been published. He died and I've got one copy of it and uh, I'm trying to get the master so we can do some things. That'd be awesome. But, uh, anyway, he, when I went into his house to consult for the song, I started complaining about Chris, okay? Because we had just been from Back the Blue. He had a Back the Blue event uh, in London. And I was complaining about Chris because I looked at the merch sales. I was like, oh, I looked at how many people 
and how, what they, you know, all this the money that was going on. And I was like, okay, what the heck here? And then I found out the, the, you know, the cops couldn't get that money. Okay. Or whatever. But I started to bitch to double MC Wayne Mooland about this. And he goes, you know what? Don't you ever, ever do that in my presence again. Mm. And I said, what? He goes, if somebody is moving the movement forward, then they are an ally. And I don't ever want to hear discredit of those in my presence. Now, if there's a, a proper accusation of, of ill will or theft or something like that, that's a different thing. But we, we can't go slagging one another, man, because we don't know what each other are going through. Yeah, and that's a general principle, you know, well well beyond uh, this this movement. And um, yeah, it's so important to to engage with people. It's why I love these, you know, these long form discussions. I mean, I've, I've, for a long time, I, I've loved listening to podcasts and, and watching long form YouTube. And because if if I grabbed a ten second soundbite of you, right, it it's impossible to paint the picture of who you are because there's the crazy eyes. There's the, there's the heart, there's, um, there's the tears. There's like, it's, you, it's impossible. How do you, how do you in one sentence of like, tell the world of like, here's Jim Kerr and, and, but that's what the mainstream media does. You know, they'll, they grab one clip of, uh, you know, some protester swinging their shirt around their head. Oh, look at this crazy guy. It's like, yeah, but for the two hours before, maybe he was shoveling the sidewalk in downtown Ottawa. Like, <laughs> but you grab the clip of him waving his shirt around his head, uh, going a little crazy. And, um, but it's, they can, but they can cut and paste and they can manipulate where, why the live streams became such a powerful tool in this movement is because, uh, you can't, you can't lie when you're live streaming an event, like, um, I mean, in a discussion like this, of course, you can lie, but you you can watch over hours of people and it's pretty you start to get a good sense of, um, you know, is this person just just full of it? And it's hard to keep up a fake image for hours at a time. And it's certainly hard when you're filming an event. Uh, what are you going to turn the camera every time there's something you don't like? No, like you're just you're walking around for six hours if, if, if it's a if it's a bunch of terrorists and white supremacists waving at confederate flags like you're not gonna be able to hide that for six hour stream <laughs> well hold on to be fair to be fair you could and i guess and, in theory you'd have to work at it and some do but more subtly and and here's what i mean by that i will go i okay I know that my viewers, or not my viewers, any viewers, viewers are attracted to trauma and drama. Okay? Generally. Yep. That like if when there's action, if, if you follow the police, you're going to get more viewers. If you follow the media, you'll get more viewers because the media will probably be following the police or whatever. Okay? So by doing that, we don't necessarily give all sides of the story. And I'm not saying everybody does that and everybody does their own variation of that. Some people will be more centric uh, towards um, whenever there's uh, music or something, somebody might be more centric to whenever there's uh, uh, conflict, whatever the thing is. But the whole thing, if you can really slow down long enough to show every single aspect and go to that which you like as well as that which you don't like and try not to intercede, then we're doing our proper jobs as live streamers. I think that some, however, do have a bias towards, uh, you know, not masking and not vaxxing and whatever the issue might be. Hmm. Um, and, and I don't think we can do that. I think if we, if we really want to maintain journalistic integrity, we need to look at all sides of the story and see what hits is at us. Yeah, I was, um, I was meaning more of like uh, the... Well, especially in Ottawa, when you can have a dozen different angles that people were jumping between, if 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 there it really was if it really was the great evil that the mainstream media reported it was, then how is it in a dozen different multi-hour streams of the day can people not you know see evidence of that? And um, and and that of course nothing can fully guarantee unless you are there watching with your own eyes. Uh, but it's the closest thing yeah. people can get to actually um, viewing exactly what's going on. And I think that's what de develops the the trust in it. And I, I mean, I've started doing that whenever I see these clips. I, I immediately want to track down what stream did it come from and, and watch the context of where in the same way, if you heard a soundbite. Um, I mean, I did this all the time with um, 
uh, with Trump and like whatever people think about him. But he, they loved uh, they loved grabbing one soundbite and ignoring like what was actually being said. And in the same way with uh, with video, they grab like one clip and then ignore the hour surrounding. A perfect example. Did you see the video that went around on Twitter of um, at Freedom Fighters Canada at Rolling Thunder? They were chanting USA, USA. Had you come across that? Anyway, it's a one hour, like a one and a half hour march on a stream that Coda B shot. And there's one uh, 10 second segment where Jeremy led the crowd in a chant of USA, USA, because we love our uh, our brothers and sisters to the South. And some journalists spun that as like, oh, look, they're all a bunch of like Republican funded, uh, whatever, <laughs> Trump supporters, <laughs> because we chanted USA for 10 seconds on an hour and a half march. Yeah. Like, anyway, well, and I... People- I yeah. People, unfortunately, will find what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why we have to, if we look for the truth, we'll find it, you know, but we got to look yeah. for it. Um, I, I wanted to touch a little bit on, uh, well, we didn't get into the, um, but let's, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about Rolling Thunder because people are asking about that. And then if we have time, we can look talk. At my, some... Look at my son and my grandson first. Oh, <laughs> What's up? Look, look. <laughs> You're a live stream, man. No. They, must, famous. No. they must Dude. be used to this by now. Oh, we're freezing. I have a thing where I chase him to the car all the time. Uh, when he was younger, he didn't want to leave, so I had to make him want to leave, so it became a game, and I haven't really stopped. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Usually uh, I chase him to the car. Well, on the theme of like your, your constant harassment from police, uh, I know a lot of people watched at Rolling Thunder when you um when your vehicle was surrounded by cops and uh and they broke into the bus uh can you tell us about what that was all about because there were different stories about did you pay your ticket did you not pay your parking ticket can, can you tell me what that was all about <laughs> um yeah. okay well the, the beginning of that day we were at another lot we went to the original lot that the uh, wellington and uh slater right which is where we were camped for the whole of ottawa uh for the winter time and they promptly wanted to get us out. So they threw a ticket on the thing and they said that the owners want you out. And I said, well, let's talk to the owners. And sure enough, the owners came and said, yeah, we want you out. I said, okay, well, are you going to reimburse my parking that I paid for? <laughs> said, well, no, we can't do that. You got to do that online. We'll be at the office, send an email. I'm like, oh, okay. So we drive off. We've already got our first ticket. We have complied, but whatever. Drove Wait, off they, to another they lot. Gave you, they still gave you a Go ticket? Go to the other lot, park in it. We've got, we read the thing and we think it's free but it wasn't okay. And this was about a half an hour before it was free or it was $6 for the whole weekend or something like that, <laughs> you know, whatever. So we go up to the hill and I'm up on the hill and somebody comes up to me and goes, Hey man, did you know the bubble bus is surrounded by 12 cops? I went, um, no, I didn't because I wouldn't be sitting here. Thank you very much. And so I go ripping back and then halfway back is where the live stream picks up because I really should quit smoking. Um, <laughs> Yeah, because I'm out of breath. And, and, but anyway, I get all the way back. Uh, and sure enough, there's 16 cops around my bike. I counted them. I made a point of counting. 16 cops and multiple but cars, the, right? And the original 12 that were at the first one to get us out of the first lot. So, like those 12 were part of the 16. And then there's another four. Okay. So, and then the live stream picks up. And basically, I know my drill. Okay. I've been through this enough times. I know what to do. I get in the bus. If I feel threatened, I get in or on the bus. I'll lock the doors. That's it. That's what I do. And you're going to have to break in or pull me down or shoot me down or something because I didn't do nothing. I'm staying here. Put. Thank you. So I got my bubbles going. I got the generator on the back of the uh, the bus here somewhere. But there's the gate is still stuck in Ottawa for weird reasons. That's another story for another time. Um, and I've got the generator on the back. It's plugged into the plug. And then I'm up top. Um, blowing, blowing your bubbles. Blowing, blowing bubbles, right? That's and, your thing. Yeah. And now these guys haven't said anything to me. The police haven't said anything to me. My buddy goes and talks. They're to just the like bylock. creeping around or what? They're just standing there. They're all standing around the bus. And I'm standing the bus by myself because there's nobody else there. And I'm like, I'm feeling a little bit vulnerable. I got to say. Um, but eventually the crowd starts to gather and others came and such. And this thing goes on for an hour and change, an hour and a half, I think, the whole thing. By the time uh, I was arrested, and then it went on even longer after they told the bus and stuff. But anyway, 
So I'm up top, blowing my bubbles. I'm trying to communicate these. They're not communicating me. All of a sudden, one of the green beret guys, whatever, you know, the, the tan tactic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tactic. guys who arrested me. Yeah. Okay. He looks up at me and goes, you're going to come down or I'm coming up to get you. And I saw him and I looked at him and I knew he wasn't kidding around. He was serious. He was damn yeah. serious. He wasn't, there was no, you know. He's excited. Cop. He's excited to climb up there and tear you down. Well, he, no, that guy, no, no, I don't think he was excited about it, but he wasn't not relishing. Like he would, it wouldn't he, have. He was it, fully prepared to do it. Job. That was it. That was all. And, and I saw the seriousness. So I said, okay, he's come down. I said, okay, no problem. I'm coming down. So I came down, got in the driver's seat and he goes, okay, so now you got to go. Right. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm going to go. Can't find my key. Okay. Can't find my freaking key. I'm like, dude, my wife is right over there. She's got a key, get the key to me and I'll get it. So she comes over. I let her in the door over. I let her in the door here. I'm in there talking to one cop there. That's the one that's brought me down is trying to get me to get in the key. I finally get the key. I get the key in. I turn, I'm started. Another cop comes up and goes, I want to see your ID. I turned the first cop who just got me to come down and he, he, I go, you're trying to get me out of here. The crowd is gathering. Why don't you let me leave right now? He goes, no, you can make time for this one. So I'm trying to find my wallet. Can't find my wallet now. Right. And having a bad day. Because I opened the door to let my wife in with the key, I forgot to close the door because I'm occupied with the two cops on the other side. And then another, uh, you know, tan guy came in, took my hand in a hand lock. I'm still talking to the other cops for another 30 seconds while he's got me in a hand lock because I, I don't know what the hell's going on. And then, yeah, they took me away in cuffs, uh, took me to another parking lot, switched me out in cars, told me I was going to be charged with mischief which doesn't sound like anything but let me tell you mischief is a considerably worse thing than obstruct police um because there's crazy up limits on mischief um so it i know there's a wide it's a catch-all uh, uh, arrest yeah and it can it can be really not good anyway um and what was the grounds what what was the actual thing like uh, they were chasing you around the city and you didn't, I guess to start off, you didn't pay your, your parking ticket because you didn't realize oh, it. Oh, we did pay that though, because my guy who went and talked to the bylaw ended up getting the, the parking ticket and put it in. Okay. So the parking's paid. Yes. What is the crime? What is the crime then? Did they say? They ended up issuing me a ticket for trespass. Okay. Because the part was the parking not paid right away. So like. I, I do. They actually, they issued me that ticket after I had a parking ticket. Like after I had the payment, and I still got the payment. And see, and what's horrible about this is even if it's 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 total bogus, which it is, you're still punished because this is costing you presumably thousands of dollars unless you have a, a free lawyer. But okay, so let me let me take it a step further because this isn't about me, ladies and gentlemen that are watching this. You better grab a clue really really quick. Did you see this here? This is my home. Okay, this is my home. And I'm in my home blowing bubbles in a parking lot and police feel that it's okay to come into my home, forcibly drag me out. Dude, do you have a home do that? Okay. It's you next. I'm, I mean that. Okay. That's what people don't understand. I'm okay. Okay. I've been through this. I'm kind of like old hat. I'm, I don't enjoy it. I don't relish it. I don't, I don't want it to happen, but I can deal folks. You don't want this happening to you. You really don't. And that's what's happening right now for whatever reason. Okay. Because I mean, you do your research on me, figure out if I'm a threat. I mean, my bubbles <laughs> are dangerous. I gotta tell you. You're a pretty scary guy, Jim. Look at that big bubble in the sky. That's pretty. Great big sun. Biggest bubble we know. Yeah. And it, it's just when I saw, I watched that, that whole stream and it's worth, uh, it's on your Facebook, um, I believe. And I have the links to your Facebook and YouTube uh, on there. And um, it's the strangest thing ever. You're just in the parking lot and there's like, yeah, there's 16 cops around you. Um, it, as best I could tell, all of the arrests that weekend were very targeted. Uh, you know, you were obviously on their list for whatever reason. Um and uh, they just were looking for any excuse to to nab certain people. Um, oh, dude, that was that was only the first day. You know, the next day they towed it away again. Oh, the second day you got towed as well. I did. That was only the first day. 
Okay, so so you you got a mischief charge and you got towed day one. What did day two look like? No, I did not get a mischief charge. They gave me trespassing. They threatened mischief. They gave me trespassing. They towed How my sweet bus. Of them. That night, we ended up getting to the police impound, pulling the bus out, sleeping in it overnight, and then coming back to Confederation Park the next morning. As we drove into Confederation Park, and I'm f- filming the whole time. You can check that live stream out as well. Um, the cops come up behind me as I'm in Confederation Park, turning around, and they go, woo, woo. And I say, are you pulling me over or escorting me out? They said, we're pulling you over. I said, for what? They said, there's no parking down here. I said, we didn't park. We were driving. You stopped us, right? And they go, let me see your ID. I said, what have I done? And they insisted on ID, ID, ID. Sure enough, I give them ID. They call in the MTO. The MTO comes in and looks at my lights and goes, hey, did you disconnect these? Because it's, it's an old school bus. I said, yeah, I did. I know that. I disconnected that. And then he looks at the tires. Old oh, tires look good. Here, come here. Let, do me a favor. What I want you to do is I want you to push on the emergency brake all the way down. Okay, cool. I push it all the way down. It goes pop. I said, dude, it just broke. He goes, no, no, don't worry about that. He says, apply your foot to the other brake and slowly let off your foot in the brake. Sure enough, the, the bus moves. Oh, this is no longer roadworthy. Take it off the road. Tow it out. So they towed us to uh, a parking lot outside of town, and we spent four or five days trying to get an emergency brake cable installed on it at the Bikers Church. And that's another video when we were sleeping there overnight. They had hate Be- speech. Because they know they know that if you tried to leave, they yeah, if you tried to leave, they'd be watching it and they'd pull you over all over again, right? Of course, for an emergency brake, brake cable, which nobody ever uses, um, and which is it's the oldest trick in the book, an MTO, you, because nobody ever uses it. You apply it, it breaks, and then you can take it off the road. Oh, this is a thing that they do. They just like I found it after the fact, yeah. That they can try to see if they can bust the emergency brake on an old vehicle or it's, whatever. It's a catch-all. Now, what I found out afterwards, ladies and gentlemen, if you go through this, here's a word of wisdom. Don't get your bus towed. You don't have to. You know why? Because if your vehicle is not a commercial vehicle, which this is not, this is an RV, uh, they have absolutely no jurisdiction to be able to have you towed off the road. As a matter of fact, I learned from the tow truck driver who owns, I think, 13 tow trucks, which was the only tow truck driver that would tow us out of there. By the way, there was about uh, half a dozen companies that wouldn't touch us. and the And the tow truck drivers told us they wouldn't touch us because we were associated, we were at the biker's church and we were part of the motorcycle thing. So there's all kinds of, like we couldn't get towed for the life of us. And um, yeah, it was it was crazy. And then that night when we were broken, one of the night we slept in the biker's church parking lot for a couple of nights. And uh, one of the nights we woke up in the morning, there was hate speech all over it. Um, no fascists and thumbtacks all in the driveway where we were sleeping. Um, yeah, crazy stuff, man. Yeah. Yeah, I covered that that story, and uh, if people haven't seen that, you go look back. I did a stream there, and um, yeah, people showed up at church that weekend for Rolling Thunder, and there was graffiti all over the church and thumbtacks, and I'm uh, and that was just the continuation of what had already been happening. There had been uh, threats to burn down the church. Uh, there were these hateful messages glued to the brand new doors that the church put on, all for the crime of of being open and welcoming people into their church, whether they're truckers or bikers or, or hippies or anyone else, uh, everyone is welcomed there. Um, and uh, just the, the amount of hate um, thrown uh, against this movement is, it's, it's, it's crazy. It, it's, um, I don't understand where that's coming from. I don't, I don't know what drives someone to be so uh, evil and, uh, and these constant attacks on, on people like, yourself um on 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 the sweet people at at bikers church and you couldn't have a more wonderful community um it's it's it, not it, about that you know it, it's people people are afraid their 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 life is shifting their world is shifting underneath them it's like there's you know tectonic plates underneath them they're all moving they don't know which way is up they're trying to grab onto anything and sometimes even pushing something away makes them feel like they're staying afloat you know what i'm saying so you can't really blame them it's it's a you know, it's the environment in which we find ourselves uh, that 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 influences us. You know, and fortunately, we have some control over that. But uh, yeah, man, I, I you can't really blame people. They they do what they do when they do it for the reasons they do it, and uh, when they realize that it doesn't work, hopefully they'll they'll change. Otherwise, they'll keep on suffering for it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, the hope there is, uh, you know, there's a a passage something along the lines of that uh, to put. Uh, to be kind to an enemy is like pu- uh, putting uh, hot coals on their head. You know, when when we keep responding uh, 
in in kindness and and in love it it throws them off because they're they're expecting you know you to to fight back to 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 attack them and um and and we just keep doing our thing we keep having our barbecues and 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 honking our horns and going for our little sunday drives <laughs> yeah yeah uh and it um their mind tricks do not work on me <laughs> these are not the droids you're looking for <laughs> there you go he got the reference i like it um yeah and so i there's and it's not to, to the viewers it's not like i hunt around that hard to to find uh you know people like jim and it's not like i have to sift through all these people to find you know the nice people it it's like ran and you could have grabbed random people off the streets of ottawa uh, you know people who are part of the movement and and just wonderful people uh, so many so many uh, stories and just um and uh, whether they were simple or complex or long or short, uh, just such a wonderful community of very regular Canadians. And I thought that the irony of the media attacking this as being, you know, the worst of Canada, uh, what I saw was some of the best that Canada has to offer and like uh, all crowded together in one spot. I got to tell you, man, one of my favorite stories around that was some guy, uh, Quebecois, and very much Quebecois, had no English in him at all. A couple of words he strung together, and he did his level best to communicate to me that this is the very first time that he felt that the English were his brothers and that this is what Canada is all about. In in probably six, seven words, but I got it. And 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 that I'd never even ever came anything to feeling that kind of prejudice fall away in front of me, in front of my eyes. I mean, amazing, just amazing. Yeah, and for I mean, if the, any of the American viewers aren't aware that you know, long time tensions between French and English speaking uh, Canada, specifically with with Alberta and uh, and and Quebec, and just seeing uh, the unity there. And um, I mean, I've said it many times. The Liberté, Liberté was one of the most popular chants that that we heard uh, during the whole convoy, and uh, yeah, which, incredible which for you, for you, freedom lover, loving people. If you visit liberty dot uh, com, l i b r t i dot com, uh, it's Odessa Orlowitz and her man Norbert. I've known him for years and years and years. They're West Coast people. And they do a great job of uh, bringing you a lot of really great information regarding all of the things that are going on. So plug for Liberty, L-I-B-R-T-I dot com. <laughs> oh, yeah, perfect. We'll get that. We'll get the mods to put that up. Um, do you ever do you ever done stand up before? I feel like you could do stand up. Oh, no, dude, I don't like rejection. <laughs> <laughs> See, no, exactly. I, you know what? I, trying to be funny doesn't work. If you have fun, funny happens. You like having fun. You don't like being funny. I like it. No, I'm, I'm not interested in entertaining. If you're entertained by me, fine. But I'm entertaining yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> I was blown away to, to find out you were uh, a grandfather. You're, you're so full of life. And um, it, uh, <laughs> I, I love it. Well, not that grandfathers aren't full of life. I just, you're so youthful is what I mean. Well, it's funny. I yeah, I'm madly in love with my wife. Have been forever, and uh, she's the best thing in my life. I don't even know how the hell she still sticks around. I don't get it. <laughs> um, but no, I'm 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 a very privileged person uh, because I have come to the point in my life where I realize that gratitude makes you richer, uh, and wanting more doesn't. Wanting more just makes you poor. Uh, I don't, I want, I want more for my planet. I want more, you know, I've never been, I, I used to be in financial services, dude. I was in the student high. I did all the things, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I just, at this point, man, if we're not living a life we love, we're missing the boat. Cause, cause there's going to be hardships and the hardships aren't going away. They're going to, they might even accelerate. And uh, we need to find a way to kind of roll with that. And uh Finding good people is is uh, is a gift, and it doesn't matter what they got, uh, financially or otherwise. It's just we can help each other. I'm I'm damn excited about the future. Got to be honest. Yeah. Do you want to touch on that a little bit of kind of what you're up to now and uh, uh, what your plans are? Um. Yeah, I can show you. Look. Perfect. There it is. Sold. Well, it's actually Dulos. <laughs> but whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we close on it in about a month, um, and we're getting mobile. We'll be full time freedom fighters, baby. Uh, like I mentioned, um, self reliance 
you know, self-sufficiency is, is big. So we're going to, we're going to have a uh, motor home and we're going to build a tiny home and we're going to travel around and, you know, see all the great things that the world has to offer. Um, specifically Canada. I know that the, I'm not really down for the winters, uh, up here in Ontario, but man, there's, we were across Canada last summer and there's a lot of places in this beautiful, fine country that uh, don't have those snowy winters. So. So where is the, are you going to have the tiny home kind of park permanently one spot and then travel in the RV or what's the plan? Yeah, that's yeah. it. And, and that'll be Northern Ontario, a couple hours North. A little hideout somewhere. Oh. On us building it and how, how badly we fail just to show others that they can fail too. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll go through a failing process until we win. And uh, we might document that as well. So. Awesome. So the uh, people can, if if they follow you, um, are you most active on Facebook? I think mostly. Yeah. You you jump around. You whatever you feel like. Well, no. I, I the thing was, is I was using Prism, which allows me to do Facebook and YouTube, and that worked out great, and and Twitch or something. Um, but then YouTube or yeah, YouTube kept hitting me with all the copyright strikes for music and stuff. Yeah. So I've got two of the strikes. So now I don't want to hook up the thing in case I blow the channel because there's like, I don't know, like 10,000 people there or something. So I don't really know. I mean, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. But Facebook but, Facebook is, yeah, it's, it's it got the biggest audience there. I think we got 60,000 or something, 50,000. So. Yeah, and so people, if they follow you there, they can uh, see, see what you're up to and uh, no doubt you'll be popping up at events here and there. glitching yeah i'm trying to i guess i shouldn't walk around so much how's that <laughs> yeah you <laughs> i you, you can't sit still for too long eh? no man i mean i was i was really, really doing my best to hang out with the bus for as long as i oh my gosh anyway i'm gonna stick right around here this seems well, to that be that's why you make a good live streamer because you're just uh you're always moving around and uh, always uh, ready to go Oh, the live stream. Yeah, I'll tell you, when, when, when I'm on, like when that's happening, I'm not even there, dude. The phone's doing the thing. I'm just following the phone. The phone does the thing, and I'm just like, well, I'm trying to keep up. It's really weird. <laughs> I'm envisioning just like a cartoon of the phone, like dragging Jim along. along. That's exactly what it's like, man. Exactly what it's like. It's kind of cool because I, you know, all those freezing, I didn't care my whatever froze off. It, it was like, didn't i wasn't even there i was just the camera still gotta keep going still got juice <laughs> um uh, maybe do you uh how are you doing uh for time you still enjoying yourself maybe we could do a few questions from viewers sure brother love to yeah you're into that we'll okay do a few questions and we'll uh we'll call it a wrap yeah sounds good um uh, well, well maybe first just any like we didn't talk much about the convoy but it's fine because we talked tons about the convoy any like huge highlights from the convoy that you wanted to share from your time there? Oh, God. Um, and people can I start sending in questions. I'll watch uh, for them. Other, other than parking tickets, I didn't get one ticket through the whole convoy. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> That's an accomplishment. Well, yeah. And and the parking lot that we were in, the truck that was beside us got impounded a half an hour after we left. The, oh, just you got out just in time. We got out just in time. Hmm. Just in time. And... The guy beside me got the phone shot out of his hand with a rubber bullet, and my phone stayed in one piece. Shot out of his hand with a rubber bullet? Yeah, man. He was the was guy that, that shot. Uh, he was inside the restaurant um, after the fact. Remember the iconic cafe or whatever? Yeah. The same guy. He got his phone shot out of the right. I was standing on the cement barrier with him. He got shot right out. He showed it to me. I'm like, whoa. And then uh, another person, like two door. Two, two people over there was this canister that that did something in front of and a whole bunch of sparks came out of it um so i don't even know what the hell that was but it, yeah we, but, but we, I even, look my wife my wife is the one who is telling me this is happening because my phone's still going i'm still looking at the phone i'm still you know and she's dragging me off the thing saying you're getting shot at man come on let's go right. it's crazy we all have these stories that we're just we've told so many times we're so used to and then you're like are reminded of, oh, yeah, that is pretty crazy that you were standing next to somebody who got their phone shot out of their hand with a rubber bullet. 
But, you know, it's just just another day in Ottawa with the OPS and gang. <laughs> well, the, the the one that I was I kind of was so I, I was thankful for was as the cops were coming up through Wellington to the stage. Um, I talked to Dana, Dana Peaceman, you know, Dana Peaceman. Yeah. Yeah. Up on the up on the shed, right on top of the shed. Right, right. I said, dude, can I come on? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm up there filming all of them coming in. And 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 the SWAT guys are coming up the, the truck as I'm using the doors opened to block my way going the other way while they're arresting the guy for like, hey, when does this ever happen? You know, oh, yeah, I got a, I got a request here. Um, uh, one, how long did it take the, the bus to kind of, I, I think it was a work in progress, but it says, how long did it take you to build and finish the bus? And can we get a tour? <laughs> like right now with the video, I think. She oh, means. yeah. Well, no. Well, you can, but you won't see nothing, man. It's packed up to go up north. Okay. Oh, you got it all loaded with stuff. It's okay. It's okay. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you, man. I just don't see you'll see much. Hold on, I'll turn on a light here or something. It's filled with junk right now. Oh. The, the initial build where you kind of turned this into an RV. How long did that take you? It's okay. So I bought it about five years ago, right? And then I just made modifications tore it apart a bunch of times just to get it right and it's still not right and it's still not done and it'll never be done uh because i guess we're getting a bigger one but anyway so bubbles I got oh there. that's the bubble juice the, well there's yeah the cases and cases i clear it out in the spring but this is all the stuff we're bringing up north um <laughs> but you can't see anything it's yeah it's, it's all loaded up so but the top you can i'll show the people up top is the second deck and that's got like here i think it, re it reminds me of like an old school disco kind of <laughs> kind of thing yeah, when, I, when you've got it all decked out i love the psychedelic stuff yeah I think, uh yeah there's a there's all kinds of worlds that we don't normally see that that can become available to us if we're open to it um will they uh the where there'll be bubbles for james top will there be bubbles for james top from Ooh. James Summerlin. I am so glad you asked that. You know why? Just last night. See, as much as the camera will lead me around in certain situations, the bus has a mind of its own. And I don't ever make up decisions. The bus kind of makes up decisions. Uh, it, it really has a mind of its own. Like, I, I wish I could go in detail on that. I won't because it's too freaky for people. Um, but uh, James Hopp, when I heard about this guy, I'm like, this is so incredible. Once we get all our stuff sorted and this thing closes by the middle of next month, our plan is to literally go up and find him and follow him into Ottawa. We're going to provide support for him for like probably a week before. Something oh, like that. awesome. So, yeah, I really want to, I really dig that. The, the bus digs that. That's, we, that's something we need to be doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad someone asked. So, you're, the kind of mid-June, you're going to try to meet up with him then? Yeah, probably. Or the, bu the bus is going to try to meet up with him? I'm no, it's not going to try. It's going to do that. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. And awesome. you'll come along for the ride. And then, yeah, if he wants to come in and hang out or whatever at nighttime or whatever we're going to do, and we're going to, we're going to live stream the thing. And we're going to, because as far as I'm concerned, nobody left Ottawa. Like we, we nobody left. Like we had to, so we did, but we didn't. And we keep coming back. And, and now, oh my God, ladies and gentlemen of Canada, let me tell you something. You're not allowed to do Canada Day on your Parliament Hill. <laughs> yeah, there's somebody who would say that it's not right. It's 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 almost un-Canadian. Well, guess what? We're Canadians and we're coming back. Canada Day, without question, I bet that's gonna be a big return. You watch, you watch, you watch, you watch, you watch. You're you sensing watch. you're feeling those vibes from the bus. It's giving oh, you some dude, dude, dude. Okay, like, and this is how many weeks before? This is God, this is like almost a month before. The, the strongest I had this was with the Ottawa. The, the earliest I had this kind of feeling was the convoy in Ottawa in the wintertime. That's a good sign. Because I only, I only figured, I only, the bus only knew about a week ahead of time that it was going to be something. And then when we, it was more than what we thought. But yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I will be there. Um, someone asked, will, will Jim be marching with uh, James? Oh yeah, damn straight. I mean, my wife drives the bus. I just sometimes I drive, sometimes she does. So, yeah. Perfect. Well, it it looks like you, you're you're training right now for it. You like to keep moving, so. Yeah, man. You know, our bodies are a thing, and if we don't use them, we lose them. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. The oh, I how 
I had seen a question here. I can't find it now, but um, how much bubble fluid do you go through? Oh, <laughs> ah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what I can tell you is that this uh, spring we spent a little bit over two thousand dollars in bubble fluid. Uh, and how much? Two thousand. <laughs> That's so, a lot of bubble fluid. Well, we blow a lot of bubbles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Last year we went straight across the country over to Vancouver Island and back and blew bubbles the entire way while driving. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, if we Clearly. do, you know, we don't have merch yet. Everybody's like, Oh, you should get merch. You but should sell we're, bubbles. We're, dude. What? I'm telling you a nine volt bubble machine that you put on the roof of your car with suction cups and it plugs in your fucking, your friggin' lighter. Excuse me. Does that exist? It does now in my imagination. We're the church of bubbles. So why couldn't it? I, I like the sounds of it, and you can have your own custom. Uh, yeah, but do, do you make it yourself, or like, where do you get it's, it from? It's so hard. It's the thing is, is that to get the formulation just right, or what? Yeah, well, we use a high velocity bubble machine, so it blows hard wind through it, and it, unless that has some tensile strength, they'll mm -hmm. blow apart too soon. As a matter of fact, even when we've got a good bubble solution at forty kilometers an hour. And more, it usually breaks most of the bubbles before you ever see them anyway. So we've got a remote where we can turn it on, uh, you know, at 40 or under 40K and then turn it off after. But the remote broke, so we just use more bubble fluid. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, well, I'll, um, I'll, I'll let you go there, um, Jim. And yeah, thanks so much for uh, giving your time there. I, some people, I saw questions about the more about the, the Church of Bubbles and such, but uh, if, we were talking about that a bunch at the start of the stream. So you guys can go back and watch that and uh, you can get the whole backstory on, uh, on Jim and the bus. Um, but, uh, we'll, we'll let Jim go uh, again. Thank you so much, uh, Jim. Like I, I said, at the start, your, your smile and uh, your energy just, uh, brightens my day every time I see you. Um, I'm a big fan and, uh, yeah, really enjoyed getting to know you and getting to chat some more through this and, I know we'll we'll see each other soon. I, I assume are you coming to um, or is is the bus coming to the to Toronto? Well, we would never want to tell anybody anything that wouldn't come true, but it would be my wish that the bus be there. Sounds good. The um, and uh, make sure you have your paperwork all sorted out, <laughs> dude. I got double copies of everything now. <laughs> Ready to go. Keep some spare keys too, maybe in case those get lost again. Done. Okay. Well, oh, good to talk to you, man. Love you, yeah. buddy. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, man. Thanks so much. Appreciate yeah, it. Take care. <laughs> what a great guy. Um, yeah, such just, I think you can probably see why I enjoy talking to Jim. He's just, um, I'm, and the, I had some people, some friends of mine told me I had to work at being uh, more charismatic and, and such. And, uh, but his, his energy is just, it just flows out of him. And, um, and that's not a persona he puts on when he's doing the streams. Uh, that's just him. And if you get a chance to hang out with him, uh, if you're going to be at the world freedom rally and if the bus decides to, to go and bring Jim along, then, uh, be sure to say hi to him. He's just a real pleasure to talk to in person. Your first conversation will, will be like your old friends. And so if you ever see him at an event, make sure Hop in the bus and uh, and say hi. And he always loves uh, to talk to you guys. Um, yeah, again, just an update reminder of Worldwide Freedom Rally, twelve noon, Queens Park uh, in Toronto is uh, where the the rally begins, and then the march starts at two. But the meetup is at twelve o'clock noon on the north side of Queens Park, and uh, should be a great event. Always a good. Uh, turnout and uh, let's hope the weather holds out for that and again i saw in the uh, i think it was anonymous asked uh james who and i don't know if that was sarcastic or not but uh, a reminder uh james top um really great man if you haven't had a chance you can watch i've done two interviews with him now already and uh, you can go to canadamarches.ca uh, the media is ignoring this great hero uh yeah the only mention they made of him was uh, some old charges uh, that he got uh, when he spoke out uh, against this 
And uh, that's the only mention. They no mention of the march. Uh, he's been going for, like forty to fifty kilometers a day, starting in Vancouver, working his way all the way to Ottawa. And he does these interviews. Uh, whenever he does the interviews, he's still marching. So he's chatting to people on the go. He's marching and doing the interview. Uh, what a machine! And he's just been he's been keeping up that pace. And he's on pace to get to um, Ottawa by the end of June. Uh, Veterans for Freedom will have a big welcoming uh, party for him, and they have. Um, a lot planned for Canada Day weekend, and they're going to be heading up uh, that and partnering with some other organizations. Canada Day weekend is going to be great, and uh, so plan to be there early for the arrival of James Top. Probably would suggest booking hotels now if you're planning to get up there. Uh, it's going to be a great time, and uh, I look forward to streaming that event as well. So mark your calendars for that. But yeah, this weekend, uh, if you're in Southern Ontario, uh, Toronto, uh, 12 noon, north side of Queens Park, uh, will be a rally and then a march uh, in downtown Toronto. And uh, if you're in other countries or cities, you go to WorldwideDemonstration.com and there are events and groups there for other um, countries, but I don't have the exact details on uh, all of those. But uh, that is what's happening in Toronto. As always, if you're not plugged in yet, uh, just look around on on Facebook and such. Just search for you know Windsor Freedom Group or um, the Saskatoon uh, f- like f- use words like freedom and whatever. It, it there's not like there's a corporation that I can I can send you to with uh, delegates all over the country. It's a very much a grassroots organic movement, and there's many different groups going on in many places. Um, but the you it's not too hard to get plugged in. Maybe even just grab someone with a flag on their car at a grocery store and chat to them, and uh, you can get start to plug in with the networks and such, and um, get involved because uh, it's very it's very important that each of us continues to take this stand. Um, Trudeau doesn't seem to be showing any signs of slowing, continuing to hold on to these mandates, these discriminatory practices, and we've seen very clearly the direct result of them when it comes to these the kids who were uh, segregated. Uh, made to stand behind a fence, not allowed to participate. When we look at uh, Tim Hortons camps and other camps who are denying unvaccinated children the ability to go to camp this summer, uh, and we're going to keep seeing this kind of thing over and over again until all mandates are removed. And so we're continuing to stand against that. Um, when we got to Ottawa, I said, we're, we're not leaving until we get the job done. And uh, they <laughs> they dragged us out and they uh, arrested us. But like Jim said, we're still there in spirit and we're going back and we're going to continue to stand until all mandates have fallen or uh, they lock us all up, I guess. Um, and uh, they're trying really hard with Jim. And uh, yeah, I it was hard watching that that video uh, with him. I didn't realize he hadn't seen it uh, too much. And um, just to see just a man who's so full of joy and uh, such a kind spirit to see him uh, treated like that by our police who are supposed to be there to protect us uh, and instead treating him like that with um, just for being there. And this is what's turning, we are, our Trudeau's Canada, we're, we're being in the wrong place is becoming a crime. Similar to what happened to Zot, many will remember, he was just in the wrong place and was arrested for um, just because he wasn't allowed to be on that street when it was a public street. And uh, Jim arrested for being at Young and Dundas Square because because the mayor didn't want him at Young and Dundas Square. I don't know, but that's not how this country works. You can't just uh, decide that uh, certain people aren't welcome at certain places. That's called discrimination, and we're not a fan of that here. Um, so, yeah, I, I it's a hard video to watch. Um, if you guys hadn't seen that. Already, I'm, um, I'm glad you got to see how, how that gentleman was as treated. And it's not something he, he really talks about or wears as a badge of honor. Um, but uh, he continues to do his thing and uh, keep spreading the bubbles, uh, spreading the joy of the bubble bus. And uh, we love him for it. Uh, be sure to check him out on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, he's always, um, always an entertaining guy to watch. And uh, if you're someone like me who can be a bit of a pessimist sometimes, then uh, he's very much an op- optimist and even saw that in our conversation where uh, he would push back uh, against uh, me and twist it uh, very positive all the time. So I love that about him and it's uh, great to see. Um, the uh, Oh, 
I had the privilege last night actually of jumping on uh, a little live stream uh, with um, Bic, v, Bic VC. Uh, I, I got to make sure I get this right now. Um, uh, oh, Vic, sorry, Vic VicBC Live, um, short for Victoria BC. I should be able to figure that out. So uh, that was good fun. Um, the uh, just going to see if I can find the. Uh, oh yeah, this is the the stream here. So the uh, I can get uh, Christina. You can post the link in the description if you want to check out. I had a chance to jump in with a, a little panel conversation uh, for some a late night streaming with Vic BC Live. Um, Christina, the a moderator, they're friends of hers, and she suggested I jump in. So that was good fun, and I got to jump in with them. And uh, Vic BC Live does some streaming out in Victoria. Uh, uh, right alongside uh, Tyson Hockley and some other streamers out there. And so, uh, yeah, you can check out that video if you, if you want. It was a little casual uh, sit down with Dave. And um, um, some people were, yeah, you've got the link posted there so you can check that out. It was good fun. And um, yeah, Christina has been bugging me that I don't uh, co communicate enough uh, with, with the audience. And yeah, I find it... Uh, uh, I've never wanted this to be about uh, me, and I feel very uh, conceited doing uh, doing that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I, we can let's sure let's take some uh, questions. And uh, if you're interested, um, if you if you just came for the bubbles video, then feel free to tune out. And um, but let's uh, I'll give we'll do a few minutes here with a, a couple of questions uh, from the audience because Christina says that uh, you guys have been begging. Uh, to bug me uh, uh, a little bit because uh, I'm always the one doing the interview and not getting <laughs> not getting interviewed myself. And uh, well, I'm waiting for some questions to come in there. Uh, yeah, I, I've actually had uh, uh, another contact uh, reach out who's in connection there with um, uh, Pat King, another contact of his, and uh, just doing some more uh, digging there to get some uh, accurate information as to what's going on. And, um, I'm going to uh, try to cover that more regularly here. Um, it's, it's, I didn't, like I said, I didn't have a direct link. I've been able to get a direct link now to get accurate information on what's going on, uh, with him. And, uh, he's still in prison. Um, he's had a terrible time of getting, uh, visitation, um, from people, they're only giving him a couple visits and making excuses as to why not to have visitors. And, uh, it, it's, he's in a, he's in a difficult place, uh, mentally he's being beaten down. Uh, it's been such a long time and whatever, again, anyone thinks of him, it's uh, no one should be treated this way in this country. He's very much, uh, a, clearly a political prisoner at this time. They're trying to break him down mentally. So no doubt he agrees to to gag orders and getting kicked out of the province, et cetera. And, uh, and that's disgusting. They should not be using psychological torture in order to make him comply with the things that they want him to comply with. That's not how our legal system works. And that's despicable. There's absolutely no reason, uh, he should be in jail still. And, um, I'm going to do what I can. And I've been in contact with some other media, um, to get some more attention drawn to what's going on there. So I'll keep you updated. Um, do you take uh, e-transfers uh, for for merchandise? Um, at at events, we can do e-transfers for for merchandise. the The online sales are through uh, like a, a third party platform. That so it's uh, just on their payment system. But uh, yeah, maybe I should look at uh, whether that's a possibility. But because it's working through a third party website. I don't know if it's going to be possible. Um, what do you think about future analysis? What do you think about the WF uh, globalists? Uh, this is a conversation that comes up a lot. Um, it, my general response to that is it's not something that I take a ton of time to to dig into. One, because it's very it's going to be very difficult. Um, I like to know exactly. The truth, and I hope you see from my reporting that I don't like to cover things unless I'm really confident on what's going on. And um, 
I, I think there is all sorts of things going on, uh, certainly a push towards uh, this globalist uh, agenda. But as to the specifics and who's who and what they're doing, um, leave that to other people to, to do uh, the digging on that. I think uh, all of my attention is focused on the terrible things that are happening right here, right on the surface level, right on the open. I don't think we need to dig down super far uh, to see uh, very dangerous things happening in our country, to see like the way you just saw there with how Jim's being treated with these cadets kids, with uh, kids being denied access to summer camps because of their status. Uh, what we were seeing uh, not too long ago of, you know, police getting called because I was playing spike ball. Um, I don't, I don't invest a lot, you know, it, each person only has so much time and so much emotional energy. And I don't spend a lot of time digging in to that um, myself. I'm happy that other people do and uh, encourage uh, them to pursue that. Um, for me, I'm focusing on these clear violations of our freedoms that are happening uh, right here and now and looking to support government, uh, support politicians who are going to push back against that. But I'm certainly I'm not a fan of globalization and uh, losing sovereignty. I actually posted there uh, a link on Facebook from Leslin Lewis, who was doing um, a petition against the um, uh, the World Health Organization, this move that they're trying to do to take away our sovereignty and take control. Um, well, that, that Trudeau's government is looking to sign away control uh, to the, the WHO to uh, take control of pandemic response. Uh, it's a clear loss of sovereignty. There's absolutely no reason why some foreign body should be deciding what happens in Canada. It's for Canadians and our democratically elected officials to uh, to do that, not for outside um, influencers. I'm not a fan of uh, the globalist agenda. I think there's strength in diversity, um, just like when we see in the America with the, the many different states that they, I believe they help balance each other. If one state goes too far one way, then people shift over to the other one. And, and we see a balancing that happens there. And um, I think uh, globally, it's important to have that, that balancing and uh, dangerous things happen when small groups of people have too much power. So that's my long answer to that. Um, Tom Mills says, how tall was the shed when it was on the back of the truck? I don't know the exact measurement. Jay would be a better guy to ask because he would know what the, the height limits were. It was just under it was just under whatever the limit was for for bridges. Um, because I remember when we put it up on the the tow truck, it um it was too high. That's why the uh, shed had to be pulled off of the truck when they put it on the tow truck. So I, I think it was within a few feet of whatever the limit was. Um uh, just Oh, they're coming in fast and hard here. Um, what else do we got? You don't, someone says you don't look into the W. Uh, now, yeah, to be clear, and I, I uh, not someone, sorry. Vince McDonald says you don't look into the WF. To be clear, to say I don't look into something does not mean I don't care about it. Um, I'm every day getting sent different, stories and things that are going on. And um, what I focus my time into is is looking at ways that I can make a direct difference here in, in the lives of the at the people right here in Canada and, uh, and trying to cover stories that I, I know I can get to the full bottom of. Um, Vince McDonald said, so he just lost my support. Well, I, I'm sorry. And that's why I'm trying to clarify that um, I... Um, I understand concerns of what's going on uh, there, but it's um, what I mean is it's not where I focus all of my time digging into. I always encourage people to to pursue those other channels. I, I'd like to be an entryway uh, where people can understand some of the big picture concerns that uh, we as freedom fighters have about the losses of freedom in this country and some of the things going on and uh, encur encourage people to uh, check into to other channels that, that dig into these things. Um, I mean, Raging Dissident, who I had on the other night, uh, he, he will, um, he'll dig into all this and, and, uh, tear it apart piece for piece. And, um, and I love him for it and encourage people to, uh, to look at these different, uh, people and, uh, and, and dig into these self for yourself. It's just, uh, not the, not the angle I, um, 
always take or each of us only has uh, so many hours in the day on on what to focus on but um it's um i am definitely concerned about the globalist agenda um i just know there's there are many different uh theories about how that all ties together and um it uh i haven't uh had the ability to piece it all together yet but uh I believe there there are globalist things going on, and uh, I I I am a fan of Canadian sovereignty, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, yeah, oh, well, I appreciate that. Of uh, ang- angry atheist says if one covers too much, it gets diluted, and uh, and yeah, and that's why I mean even doing uh, stuff like. Like this, uh, as you can tell, I'm mildly uncomfortable because that's not my what I usually do. But uh, but because of the request of you guys, I'll, I'll do a bit of that. Um, so many hours, yeah. D Connect says that is it, Dave. Only so many hours in a day for uh, for one guy. So, but yeah, definitely uh, to in the chat there. If um, if there's other resources that um, that uh, that Vince, you can be directed to and. Um, in no, in no way, uh, discouraging people from, uh, digging in to these things and, um, and looking into them just, um, it's, it's not what I uh, focus on covering all the time. Um, yeah, will, will you be selling stickers and such on Saturday? Uh, potentially it, it yeah, it's going to, going to depend how uh, close to Queens park I could get. And, um, yeah, we'll try to, we'll try to bring. We'll try to bring a bit of uh, merch down there. The The online sales are always really appreciated because um, then it can be shipped out direct. And uh, But um, I will try to get... It's hard in, in Toronto because you have to bring everything in and we can't just like park the truck and uh, have our, our stickers on the website. Um, the stickers are available on the uh, livefromtheshed.ca website, yes there's um there's two stores there's the youtube store and there's the facebook store the reason there's two is because uh one is is built for compatibility with uh, youtube and the other is compatible with facebook so on the youtube store there are stickers yes at live from the shed.ca there are some stickers on there um Brad says, Dave, I always love that you respect and pay attention to an alternative perspective and point of view. Reasonable person, always able to talk reasonable with reasonable people. Thank you. I appreciate that. Brett? Yes, I guess people are a fan of the stickers. That's good. <laughs> yeah, Anonymous says, just stay in your lane, Dave. Yeah, and that's why I don't, uh, I don't want to... I don't want to talk about things I'm not uh, confident on, and so all when I say that I haven't done I haven't done enough uh, reading or research on the topic myself to be able to confidently exchange that to you, and I, I don't want to lose uh, credibility as uh, as uh, a trusted source. And so, unless it's something I'm very confident on, then I'll probably focus on more of a big picture, like a concern for globalism, um, and I'm confident on that being an issue. But as to the inner workings of what's going on. It's not um, something that I'm 100% confident on and exactly how that works or or, or what's going on. But uh, I do believe things are at play behind the scenes. Um, and we uh, and I encourage people to do continue to research and never take my word or any other one person's word for something specifically. Um, look at different perspectives. Do your do your research, ask the questions and uh and 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 weigh it all together to figure it out um just seeing here scrolling through (laughs) um yeah comments sort of for well if there's uh if there's nothing else there, then yeah, Curly May says focus on Canada. Um, yeah, that is that is will be my priority. And uh, moving forward, um, definitely continuing to bring you coverage of uh, James Top. As I've said before, I really believe that uh, James Top, er, or 
Veterans for Freedom of that whole organization is um, great potential to to pull everyone together as they've been doing. Uh, they bring so much professionalism and uh, a integrity to the movement, and I look forward to what they're going to offer in Ottawa. Canada Day is going to be great. Future Now says, uh, Dave, may I ask if you prefer PPC or uh, CPC? Hey, you're going to get me into all sorts of hot water. Again, uh, whatever my opinion on these various things uh, should, uh, I hope, not affect uh, someone's view of me as a person. And I, I value different perspectives on uh, all of these things. And I share my viewpoints, um, but uh, always want to try to bring you uh, as a or be open about my biases and such and uh, try to bring you unbiased coverage while still obviously admitting uh, my biases and and the things I um, uh, believe. And um, so that's a complicated question. Um, I was from the age of 18. I always voted for the Conservative Party of Canada in every election that uh, occurred uh, right up until um, the how uh, Aaron O'Toole um, his leadership, uh, was not, I was not impressed with his leadership and, uh, especially his treatment of Derek Sloan and, uh, forcing him out of the party over silly cancel culture type stuff. And, uh, that was, uh, I'd already had my, I mean, I didn't, uh, I didn't vote for Aaron O'Toole as the, the leader of the party. Um, I, I actually voted for, um, uh, well, way back in the day, I did vote for Maxime Bernay as the leader of the conservative party. And then he ended up starting the, the PPC. But um, like many conservative voters in the last election, uh, as a protest vote, I uh, I, I voted uh, PPC um, because of, yeah, I have major concerns over Aaron O'Toole's leadership and then major concerns over the lack of response from the conservative party of any pushback against the mandates, against the lockdowns, uh, against that uh, behavior at all. They were not acting like... Um, they were not acting like the opposition. They were just, like I talked in another stream, of getting pulled along uh, with the liberals and they were not doing their job as an opposition party. And so um, I wanted to make a clear statement that uh, that I did not support the direction of the Conservative Party. Um, as to in the next election, um, I, I don't know. It's, it's not like I'm locked into... Um, uh, although I voted Conservative my whole life, I'm not some fanboy and... Uh, uh, I voted PPC in the last, and I'd be willing to do so again. It, it's something I'd have to examine in the next election. Um, honestly, uh, my dream scenario would be that uh, whoever wins the Conservative Party nomination and becomes the next leader could uh, could potentially broker uh, a deal with Maxime Bernay that could potentially bring the parties uh, back together, uh, which would, would have Maxime in an important role in the Conservative Party, help pull them back in the direction of liberty and small government. Uh, there's a lot about uh, Maxime's policy, his libertarian leanings that I value, and I would love to see him come back in and work on reforming the Conservative Party. I think, as I've said before, I don't think the cons um, Conservative Party is beyond repair. And if some people disagree, you know, please uh, be welcome to do that. And I, I, I understand people. Um, believing that uh, the conservative party may be beyond repair and uh, hoping to be optimistic on that. And uh, if if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, I would love to see the conservative party being um, uh, potentially uh, restored into a true conservative party, a true opposition. And I think Maxime could have uh, an impact on that of, of bringing in more of that voice from the side of uh, liberty and freedom. And uh, Maybe it's a long shot. Maybe that would never work, um, but uh, but maybe uh, maybe it's possible. And uh, let's see, we got some other questions. <laughs> if so, a future now. If uh, yeah, if Pierre, if Pierre could get Max back, unicorn uh, party. I'm not, is that a term? I don't know if it's a term I'm familiar with, unicorn uh, party, but is that just a good time? Uh, imagine a party with a unicorn would be a good time. Um, oh, in, in uh, 
mentioning Pierre there, if we're going to go down this political direction, he just did like an hour and a half interview with Dr. Jordan Peterson. Uh, haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Maybe tonight here when I get off the stream. Um, but uh, yeah, Pierre Paul Lever, uh, just did a one and a half hour podcast style interview with Dr. Jordan B. Peterson and uh, looking forward to watching that. Like I talked about before with Jim, it's one thing to have a 10 second sound bite. It's another thing to chat for an hour and a half. And so if, uh, if people are wanting to learn more about him and see where he stands, I feel like an hour and a half with one of the greatest minds in this country uh, should be a good start for learning about him. I also noticed that uh, Dr. Peterson tweeted out that he, he'd be open to speaking to all of the candidates. And uh, I saw that Leslie Lewis responded that uh, she said she'd love to have a conversation with him. So we might be seeing a whole series of, uh, of Jordan B. Peterson sitting down with the leadership candidates, which I think would be great. Um, not going to lie, I'm a fan of Dr. Jordan B. Peterson, as you probably caught on. Actually going to get to go see him in Kitchener uh, coming up. Is it next week? Even or I, I need to check the date again, um, but uh, going to go be seeing him soon. And uh, yeah, so he did an hour and a half podcast with uh, Pierre Paul Rivera that's on YouTube. And uh, it looks like he might be having one coming up with Les and Lewis. The, uh, my background, uh, kids, wife, etc. Nope. Uh, I'm single. Um, the, uh, just live on my own here and, um, yeah, gotten pretty used to it. Don't mind it. Um, but, um, got some, uh, couple nieces and a little nephew and, um, yeah, so I have, I have two brothers who are both married with kids and uh, enjoy getting to spend time with them when I can and uh, have a great family, but uh, no no, uh, no wife and, and children. Oh, I get it. No, no such thing as a unicorn. So you're saying it would be impossible. Yeah, I know, but it wouldn't it be, it would be cool. Um, but yeah, probably not going to happen. I get what you're saying now. Bitcoin, yes. <laughs> See, the difficult. Um, I'm more comfortable answering questions that I've actually uh, th th bit. Um, I, I don't really have a. I'm not the person to ask about that. I haven't done. Uh, I played around with crypto a little and basically just lost money. So, um, it uh, it's not something I uh, have spent a lot of time with. Uh, definitely. Uh, it has some great applications. It just the whole um, blockchain technology has huge implications uh, working in the future. Um, but uh, I I have played around with some Bitcoin stuff, but uh, I'm not very good at it and I mostly lose money. So <laughs> Canadian tire money, yes or no? Um But uh, yeah, you guys are going to make me look uninformed here now with these these questions. Um, what else we got here? Maybe a Ponzi scheme. Who knows? Future net recording to Bitcoin. Um, yeah, who knows? I uh, I like to. Um, if I do invest in something, I'd prefer to invest in people and that I like business owners that I believe in or individuals that I, I trust. And, uh, but the, um, Bitcoin, I don't know a lot about, um, how did you start uh, streaming? Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to try to get in the habit now of, uh, posting to, uh, Spotify. So I've started downloading, uh, the videos after I get off and then uh, putting them up on Spotify. So um, if you want to, if you'd prefer to listen sometimes if you're driving and and uh, and want to do it that way, then uh, you can check out Live from the Shed on Spotify and uh, Apple uh, Podcasts and they will be up there as well. If you want to, uh, especially some of the longer ones, if you want to just do it while you're driving, then they will be up there as well. Live from the Shed on uh, Apple Podcasts and on Spotify I will be keeping that up to date moving forward. Uh, how did you start streaming? Uh, we set up, a, if you can go back and watch the old videos, but we set up a camera 
on top of the shed truck. Uh, I was working as uh, what we called a street captain down on Wellington, which essentially just meant I just to help. Um, I was not uh, in a truck myself. I didn't come in a truck. I'm not a truck driver. Um, and I got connected with Jay, the owner of the shed truck, and uh, we became good friends. And uh, together we helped uh, take care of that street and getting them fuel um, and food and, and other horrible crimes like that. And uh, just watching out for the guys and helping to manage the street. And uh, as it neared the last, when we were into that last week, we felt it important to put up some cameras, um, predominantly for the security and safety of the um, drivers and making sure that um, if something went down, which we expected it to with the police, that it would be uh, safe and uh, or safe. It would be recorded because we knew it wouldn't be safe. It would be saved. And uh, so bought um, some cameras and mounted them on top of the shed truck hooked up an old laptop that I had brought with me, downloaded OBS because Google told me that was a thing and uh, and learned how to stream and never done that before, but learned how to set up a YouTube channel. And so I was streaming from the shed and um, that's where the whole name Live from the Shed um, was born out of. And um, yeah, and then after that, yeah, that, well, as you mostly, I think most viewers would be aware of then ended up live streaming right up until my arrest. I was in the truck running the stream when, uh, when the police showed up and, uh, you can see me and you can hear me in the stream cause there was a microphone inside the shed and then ended up outside and you can see me getting taken away. I was arrested at gunpoint out of the shed truck on the Saturday when they came down Wellington street. And then, uh, I was dropped off and released. And then, um, after everyone left, I just, decided to pick up the camera and start sharing the stories of what was still going on in Ottawa because most people had left and um, people enjoyed it. And I felt that it it was helping move the movement forward. And um, so I just, I kept rolling with it and I love talking to people. It's people have asked what my hobbies are. And one of them is just uh, connecting with people and talking to people. And so if I can, uh, if I can do it to, to help this movement, and um and just film myself talking to people then it's not a challenge for me because i love talking to people and so that's how that um that's how that came about do you think any libs or ndp will cross the floor uh that would be wonderful um yeah i i'm curious how if the if the tension continues to build and uh, I, I I wouldn't see NDP or Libs crossing the floor, but I you know I could see pressure from within uh, within the government and uh, you know maybe end up seeing a non confidence vote. I would love to to see that at, uh, a non confidence vote in in the the leadership of Justin Trudeau uh, crossing the floor. Um, maybe, but. Uh, that uh, we don't know. Yeah. Believe it when I see it. You're on Spotify, dude, since when? Um, well, I threw a couple up um, like way back. And then I, um, and to be clear, I'm not doing a separate episode on uh, on Spotify. I'm just downloading the audio from this and putting it up on Spotify. Um, and uh, I just uh, hadn't had enough time to kind of play with figuring it all out. And uh, I've spent a, I spent a day figuring it all out. And so now I'm going to try to start doing that on a regular basis for you guys. And uh, you can check it out on Spotify live from the shed. Um, do you think the pre PC will bring in uh, political reform so we can finally make a change to government if they fail us? Um, I think one of the most important things that the the uh, PPC uh, has done um, is is help pull conservatism as a whole to the right. Um, in cr- over and over again, it, the conservatives keep they were trying to cater to the left. They kept moving to the left, and uh, I don't believing that maybe you know if I become more like the cool kid, people will hang out with me, or I don't know what that was. Uh, but they kept drifting to the left, especially under Aaron O'Toole's leadership. 
And um, there was this ongoing move in that direction and not being a real opposition voice. And uh, the PPC and, and the strong showing that it got demonstrated um, that um, that that is not how you're going to go about uh, forming government. You're going to end up losing your support from the right and you're not going to gain support from the left and you just end up uh, in a worse place than when you started. So I think what one of the best things the PPC did was was show um, the government in a very in the conservative government, especially in a very real way, that it's a losing strategy to um, move to the left, and uh, it it's going to trying to copycat the Liberal Party is going to get you nowhere. Canadians want a real opposition, um, a real alternative to what's going on. So, um, and I think they did that in a very effective way. Um, and like I said, dream scenario that uh, there could be much like we saw um, years ago with uh, when the Reform Party uh, came together with the Canadian Alliance, um, then uh, to form the new Conservative Party of Canada. Um, I would like to, no, I'm sorry, I'm mixing my, when the, the Progressive Conservatives merged with the Canadian Alliance to form the Canadian, the Conservative Party. Um, because uh, the more the right splinters, then it makes it increasingly more difficult to uh, to actually form government and make some serious changes. So that would be my thoughts on that. No, uh, Lynn asked, stream before the convoy. No, I never stream before the convoy. I, uh, I thought people who did this were weird. Uh, not going to lie. And... Uh, when I, I still find it super uncomfortable walking around with a tripod, uh, staring at my face. And, um, but I, I believe that there's value in this and, uh, and communicating that. And, and that's also why I'm, I'm very careful with these. Um, you know, I appreciate the, the interest in, in hearing about me personally, but I don't want, again, my personal views on anything to, uh, to take away from the opportunity to, um, to spread the um, spread the message that I'm trying to to share and the focus on on the freedom. But um, so uh, um, that is why I uh, haven't done much of this. But uh, we'll do it once in a while for fun. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for the super check. Love music sixty two. Thank you, Dave, for the great coverage and info you always provide. You're always so polite and professional, and I always love to see you smile. Thank you so much. Um, appreciate that. Um, well, I'm going to, uh, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, I, I'm continuing to learn as I go here and I might explore with, um, yeah, I, I would enjoy engaging with viewers a bit more. Um, but, uh, going to try to keep the, the interviews focused, uh, predominantly on interviews and, and maybe look at doing, um, another, avenue for uh some more uh, viewer interaction for those who want to dig in more or, or maybe i'll add these on at the end and if uh if you're not interested in it you just end it after the interview and move on um but uh, i'll experiment with it a bit uh i <laughs> i'm making this up as i go it's been a it's been a very it's been a learning experience and uh i appreciate you guys coming along for the ride thank you for those who've been tuning in since back in ottawa uh <laughs> first time i turned the camera on in front of my face and to those who um who have just been tuning in now and uh thank you guys for sharing the content out um yeah be sure to like subscribe all that good stuff uh you can follow um live from the shed on facebook uh youtube instagram tiktok and on spotify and itunes uh podcast and um yeah appreciate the um you, you guys uh, sharing it out there and um there's still lots of people who aren't really aware that anything's even going on. Um, there's there's lots of people that I'm walking past every day who who don't know there's anything do, to do with freedom going on these days, and so important to continue to get the message out there. <laughs> Vic BC Live uh, shouted again to him. Says uh, so glad you decided to turn the camera on, Dave. Cheers. Well, th th it was doing. There was a nervousness of uh, at that point. I wasn't sure if I was going to end up in prison or not. And, uh, and then also just finding it very, um, uncomfortable. But, uh, when I get, this is why I prefer having guests. Cause I find this thing of talking to uh, comments uh, a little odd. Um, but I'll, I'll get better at it. 
and um, versus when I'm talking to guests, it's just, I forget, I just turn off my brain that there's people watching and I focus just on talking to, um, talking to uh, the guests that I'm having and I enjoy doing that. Uh, be sure to check out uh, Vic BC live. He does some coverage um, out there on uh, some of the stuff that's happening in Victoria, British Columbia. Okay. Uh, good night, guys, and uh, thanks for that. Hope you had had fun getting to uh, grill me a little bit there, and uh, all the best to you. Um, love you guys. Uh, good night, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow with Kyle from Ottawa.